Hello, everyone, again. Thank you for attending. Uh, we talked about the scenario of, of, of three situations that we're going to kind of like do to build up to the normal distribution, or at least talk about the normal distribution to some level. I mean, at least introduce the normal distribution and uh, um, derive it in a sense and have an idea what we're, what we're looking for. It's pretty, pretty important stuff. The normal distribution occurs in so many places. Before we get there, I mean, we, we said we're going we're gonna to take, I guess, four steps, and we'll see how the videos are going to be produced to do it, but uh, essentially four videos all in one is probably unlikely. It'd probably be too long, but uh, four videos in some sense, maybe two of them combined, we'll see, or maybe just all of them separate. But we talked last time about uh, four scenarios that are of interest, and I guess I'll mention it every time I'm doing these four, I guess. The last time we were together or at least the first thing that I wanted us to look at as we build our way toward talking about the normal distribution. And even if we don't talk about the normal distribution, just in and of themselves, the mathematics is really useful. Uh, really important stuff, even if we never got to the normal distribution. Well, there's some pretty interesting mathematics occurs, guys, when we talk about a look, uh, a look at some probability theory. Um, so we, you know, we already talked about that. Today we're going to talk about Wallace's formula for pi. Uh, and then at some future point, we're going to talk about Sterling's formula. In and of themselves, those three are just really important, just by themselves, as is. Uh, when we're done with, in totality, when we're done with a look at some probability theory, which we already did, and then we're done with Wallace's formula today, uh, to the best of my ability, and then we'll talk about Sterling's formula, and afterwards we'll talk about the normal distribution. Uh, that's kind of the goal. And... Uh, all of these will scroll together uh, as one big article. These four, art these four articles will scroll as one big article at the end of all, uh, at the end of each video that's produced regarding these four articles. So uh, in totality, they'll all be present, guys. There's going to be times where I'm not going to be able to realistically cover the discussion that I'm doing right now on film. Uh, with, with all the time that I want to give to it. I mean, even, I know my videos are long as is, they could be probably potentially a lot longer. So at some point I have to like defer to the articles themselves. The four, these four articles and other articles that I've written uh, with the help of, of brilliant scholars that I've looked at and, and in that sense consulted, otherwise I wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, when we look at the articles that I've written, having drawn from so many brilliant people, the articles themselves to read through them are potentially easier than looking at the film. So sometimes in the film I have to go a little bit faster than what I would have in the articles, but the articles themselves are pretty time efficient uh, in and of themselves to read through them. Those of you who have me as a teacher will find that on Canvas as I speak about this now, uh, as it remains on Canvas for how long it remains. And other people, I mean everybody in general should be able to see this uh, where I've posted it. You know, so. Uh, Hopefully the accessibility is going to be available for a long time. Okay, with that in mind, we want to talk about Wallace's. We want to talk about Wallace's formula for pi. Brilliant, uh, brilliant work on the part of Wallace uh, and others discussing what Wallace had done. So it's, it's pretty, pretty amazing stuff. We're lucky to have this, this brilliant formula uh, for pi uh, associated with Wallace. Wallace's formula for pi is something we're going to look at right now. The key to everything that we're doing regarding this matter, one of the major keys associated with it, to give us a look at pi in terms of a product, not in terms of a sum, in terms of a product. And that's going to help us with other calculations that we might be doing. Hey, is there a way we can actually write pi not only as a sum, can we write it as a product, an infinite product? You can. And that's where Wallace's formula for pi comes in. They were able to prove it considering the integral of sine to the n power of x dx. And that's the key to everything. We're going to look at that and see how that plays out. Now, if you make n a very big integer, how big an integer? You choose. How big a positive integer? n could be 0, could be 1, could be 2, 3, 4, etc. All the way into a big positive number. A uh, very big positive number. I mean, going toward infinity and the limit. Is, is this integral possible? The integral that we're doing, though we didn't write it here, just, just for, I don't know, maybe for the aesthetics, I guess you could say. The integral is 
we're using radians. Remember, that's the, that's the language uh, that is the right language, so to speak, or the most natural language for speaking about angles and, and, and doing calculus related to angles. The most natural angles associated with all that are the radian. Okay. We are going from zero radians to pi over two radians, and we're integrating sine to the n power of x. Uh, not, not, not x taken to the n power, but uh, sine of x to the n power. So it's hard, to, it's hard to say this well, guys. Basically, we're saying sine to the n of x dx. Sine, well, it's not as hard as I thought it was, right? Sine to the n of x dx, the integral of sine to the n of x dx from 0 to pi over 2, can we evaluate it? Are there ways around it? Well, sometimes you've got to be a little slick to get this done. If n is a really, really big positive integer, uh, there's some patterns we can see. And these, things, these patterns are associated with something we call recursive formulas. So let's take a look at it. Um, and again, you'll see this in the actual document itself that will be available to you. So I, the document goes into it in, in, I guess you could say, better detail than I'm... The document I wrote goes into it in better detail than I can get filmed. Perhaps yes, perhaps no. We'll see. I'll do what I can. Well, Wallace's formula for pi, I say here, the, the following is found in the brilliant work of Richard Courant and Fritz John. Introduction to Calculus and Analysis, Volume 1, pages 280 to, to 282. And I have that. You'll see that in the document as well, guys. We will consider integrals of the form, the integral of, integrals of the form, integral of sine to the n of x dx. So, fantastic. And we'll do this, uh, you know, we'll do so comparing two different scenarios. Where n is 2 times m, where m is, uh, you know, there's a number of ways you can do this, I guess you could say, uh, where, where m is anywhere from 0 to some big number, and, uh, you know, for, you can use n equals 2m or n equals 2m plus 1. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Well, you got even numbers, more or less. I mean, 0 is not really an even number, but you could have, if you go m equals 0, m equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and you go two times that, you're getting even numbers or zero. And if m, and if, so if n was equal to just 2m, and m as in mom goes from zero uh, to infinity, let's say, of all the whole numbers, then you're getting even number scenarios except for n equals zero. But you get n equals zero, n equals two, n equals four, n equals six, etc. When n is equal to 2m plus 1, and m, as in mom, is 1, 2, 3, I'm sorry, is 0, 1, 2, 3, on and on in that regard, all the whole numbers that way, then the 2m plus 1 comes out to uh, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. You get the picture. For the 2m scenario, it's going to be 0, 2m as in mom, then n is going to be 0, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8. So you got two scenarios. The two m's are going to give you, with the exception of n equals 0, are going to give you all even numbers. The 2m plus 1 is going to give you all odd numbers. And in both circumstances, you got how many terms? You've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for m. And then you go 2m to get the n as in Nancy, or you go 2m plus 1 to get the Ennins and Nancy again. So how many terms are there total? If you're going from 0 to some number m, uh, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to m. That's m of them. Yeah, but you got 0 in there as well. Zero plus, you know, th that 0 term is 1 term plus m terms, m plus 1 terms in both, both cases. OK. All right. Sounds good. I mean, I, 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 think I, I think I write it a little bit better than maybe I just said it right now. But again, you're going to have all that there, you guys. You're looking at these scenarios. You're playing the game here. Let's see how we can pull this thing off and get some kind of idea of what's happening. At first glance, it's not going to be easy. And at first glance, if somebody says that it's not going to be easy, they're actually right. Um, it, it's not real easy, but we can do it. It's, it's tedious. It's not too bad. 
basically, here it is. How does that play out? Well, I'll tell you what. Do you guys remember that if you were going to take by the product rule, the differentiation of a product, uh, ddx of the product uv, where both are functions of x, u and v are functions of x, d of uv dx is u dv dx plus v du dx. Uh, multiply by the differential dx on each side, you got all this. If you were to integrate d of u times v, you get u dv within particular limits. If you were to integrate this, uh, you know, so let's, let's, uh, let's see what we can do. You multiply by dx on each side, you work right here. If you are, um, good scenario, a good way to kind of look at it, I guess you could say is, if you go right here, you got, you know, you're right here, you've got this, and we've talked about that. Again, you're just doing the product rule, ladies and gentlemen. You're right here, you are taking the derivative with respect to x, of this function, which is a product of two functions of x. Uh, so you're taking the derivative of the product, and that's equal to this. We know that. If you multiply by dx on each side, just look at the differentials, you got this. Uh, true. If you were to integrate both sides, um, again, I hadn't really gone in that direction just yet, but if you were to integrate, um, Wish I had a little more room, guys, that's for sure. Uh, if you were just to integrate both sides, you're looking at this situation. Uh, v du. And, well, the integral of this right here just gets you to this. And, you know, within the appropriate limits. I don't want to split too many hairs on that, but basically, we know as a general rule, you guys, if you were to integrate anything uh, with respect to x, let's say, it gets you some manifestation of the x. Integrate this with respect to u. If it's du, it gets you the u. Well, this becomes your u. The whole, this whole big thing becomes the u, in a sense. Becomes some other, you know, call it y, call it capital Y. If you were integrating, um, if you were integrating some capital Y, uh, you're getting Y within appropriate limits, and you 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 have to get the limits of integration and everything else for our purposes. It's, it's Y plus C or something, or if you got the right limits of integration, if you were going from you know, I, uh, wherever you'd say, you'd say you're, you're integrating between y sub zero and y sub one or something, or y sub one and, you know, y sub one and y sub two, you'd get the limits between y two and y one. You'd get the difference and find it out. So this is not really the final answer, but it's, it gives you the functional answer and you evaluate it within the appropriate limits. So this guy is like your u. If you integrate this differential, you get the difference uh, between the function from which this, you, you'll get the difference between two limits from where this differential came. Uh, from where this differential came is the function from which it came, and the, uh, and the function from which it came is uv. So you got this right here. Uh, if you, you know, want to solve for uv on each side in that, in that case, uh, you could say u dv right here, that integral, subtract the integral v du on each side. And so what you're talking about, u dv, that integral, subtract this guy, when you actually do the integral, we said it's just going to come out to uv. And this is, I want to make sure you guys can see this okay. We've got great, a great system set up here, given some less than ideal circumstances that the people that helped me out have really made this some great circumstances. So if you integrate both sides, you end up getting what I wrote right here. You integrate both sides, you end up getting what I get right here. And so that guy is by itself, subtract v du on each side, um, or the integral v du on each side, you're getting something like this. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a key situation. That's a real key situation. When you get it down to here, 
Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen, when we get it down to here, um, when we get it down to here, that's, that's what this is. See, we basically took sine to the n of x dx, and we made, we broke this thing up into sine to the n minus 1 of x times sine to the 1 of x. You broke it up. What does that mean? Well, here's your u. Together, that's your du. Can you play the game? Yeah, I can do it. I mean, I can, uh, I can say, well, the u is this. The sine to the n minus 1 is that guy right there. Forget the negative for now, just for one second. Uh, that's sine to the n minus 1 of x sine to the n minus 1 of x, and the integral of the sine function is negative cosine. Oh, negative cosine. Negative cosine, I'll throw the negative right here. And that's going to be evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. That's interesting. Let's, let me jump the gun a little bit, so when I talk about it later, it's not going to bother you as much. That's integrated from 0 to pi over 2. This whole integral is from 0 to pi over 2. That's from 0 to pi over 2. That's from 0 to pi over 2. OK, we get the picture. Wait a minute. 0 to pi over 2, 0, huh? What's the 0? Cosine of 0 radians is 1. That's great. Yeah, I know. The sine of 0 radians is 0. Doesn't matter to what exponent you take it. 0 times 1 is 0. So on the 0 side, on the bottom side, 0, you got 0. Pi over 2, uh, pi over 2 is 1. To any power, still 1. Okay, yeah, I know, cosine pi over 2, however. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Another 0. 0, 0, 0 minus 0, 0. That's all going to drop out of here, and then we got this business. Eventually, this is going to be the way it plays out. And I'll come back to it. I mean, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll talk about it again. But now you just saw something big. And there's something going on here already. We're seeing a pattern. This is dropping out. This is minus a negative, which is going to be a positive. This is sine to the n minus 2, so it's two smaller than what we initially had up here. Remember, this was the initial situation, my friends. This is the initial situation of all of them. Maybe I should have made that even bigger. But this is the initial situation of everything. And that's two smaller, and I got this. That drops out. Aha! Uh -huh. Anytime the sine and the cosine are mixed together, in these situations, if you're integrating from 0 to pi over 2, the sine and the cosine will work in such a way that the integral at the end of all that is 0. If you got a final result of a sine like this and a cosine like this, and you're integrating from 0 to pi over 2, Wow, pi over 2, the sine of it is 1. Yeah, I know, but the cosine of it is 0. Pi over 2, the sine of it is 1, but the cosine is 0. 0 radians, the cosine of it is 1. Yeah, but on the other side of that, the sine of 0, uh, the sine of 0 is 0, even though the cosine is 1. So pi over 2 is going to have a sine of 1, but a cosine of 0. You multiply anything with 0 in it, you got 0. Uh, the, now with zero on the other hand, the, the sine of it is zero. End of the story right there, even though the cosine is going to be one. So it's going to be happening all over the place like that, guys. So that's going to be dropping out of there. Something to kind of keep in mind when we're doing this, I guess you could say. So well, what is going on here? Let's, let's kind of be careful here. What, let's, let's do it again. Well, we said we're breaking this thing up into UDV. The U is this guy. Okay, great. Write them down. The V is the integral of the sine function, which is negative cosine. Here's negative cosine if you put the negative right there, and that's where we got all that. Minus V du. What's the V? The V is the cosine. So um, V is the... Now we got to be careful. Okay, now we get... Uh, the, the V we said is negative cosine. Okay, negative cosine x. Sure don't look like it, well just stay with me. Negative cosine x is in here somewhere and there's also another cosine x, we'll talk about that. The other one is du. What does that mean? 
Well, we just said this was u. The du on this is the derivative, product rule, and then do chain rule as well. Derivative here, the negative, uh, the n minus one, so it's minus, bam, n minus one comes out. Uh, n minus one comes out, then it goes to the n minus two power. Then the derivative of the sine of x by the product rule is cosine x. Here's your cosine squared x. Positive cosine x times negative cosine x. Positive cosine x times negative cosine x is negative cosine squared x, sine to the n minus two x dx. Uh, the n minus one came out here and it was a minus here. Minus a minus, um, Okay, so we have this right here. I kind of wrote over it a little bit. I'll erase Wallace's formula eventually. We come to here. Uh, let's talk. Minus a minus plus. That's this guy. That's this right here. That's this right here, guys. Um, negative. Uh, let's see the other thing. The other was negative. Uh, I guess it's all this business right here. I guess I'm, I'm reading too much into it. It's right here. Okay. Uh, let's keep talking. Well, okay. Here we go again. All this, all this right here, all this right here is right here. Uh, the plus is this. So you got all that. Got a question to ask you. Let me put the sign to the negative. I'm sorry. The sign to the n minus two of x, the sine to the n minus two of x. Let me write it right here. This guy, do you mind if I write cosine squared x as one minus sine squared x? Wow, everybody's in terms of sine now. Everybody's in terms of sine. We pulled it off. We get down to here. This guy's still here. We already said this guy's gonna drop out of there. Maybe I should have dropped him out sooner rather than later, but let's, we're not gonna worry about that. We're not gonna worry about that. Uh, for now at least. We got this, we got all this, and all I do is distribute here. Uh, the integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals. We get to here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, again, this top guy is right here again. Uh, this n minus 1 comes to the here, and the n minus 1 comes over here. Uh, n minus 1 comes to here, n minus 1 comes to here, and we get about to there. What just happened here? Well, a lot happened. Now we got to be careful. You guys have this. You can always reverse this and look at it. You also have the document. I mean, the document's probably going to be a lot easier. You don't have to worry about reversing anything. Just print out the document if you want and take a look at it. And I think we're going to be okay. The guys I quoted, as I said, the people I quoted were pretty remarkable in what they've done. They make this, they make this a great experience for all of us if, if, uh, if we look at, at, at their work. Uh, and hopefully I'm, I'm conveying it at some level. It's going to help you guys out a little bit, uh, at least to refer you to where you can look at their work as well. Uh, so here it is. Um, we're looking at this. So this, this guy right here, the integral from sine... The integral of sine to the n of x dx equals this whole thing right here. Wait a minute. You said sine, act, sine to the n of x dx is all this. It's all this. Yeah, but wait a minute. That guy is occurring right here on the other side of the equation. I guess I could say that this guy right here is 1 times all that. And this right here is negative. I should not have done that, guys. I'm sorry. I mean, that's making it look a little messier than it should. It's negative all this times the same all that. Wait a minute. If I add the opposite of negative, the quantity, n minus 1 times the integral sine to the n, sine to the n of x dx. If I add the opposite of negative, the quantity, n minus 1 times the integral sine to the n of x dx. If I add the opposite of that negative, which is a positive on each side, add that on each side, 
it comes over to here. And then you'll have something set up here. True, and you know what, guys? Let's, let's cut to the chase. If you're going to evaluate this thing right here, just this guy right here in the white that I'm doing right here, evaluate it between 0 and pi over 2, that's 0. Evaluate this quantity. Evaluate this mathematical entity uh, be, between the limits of integration that you've accomplished, that you've used. Between the limits of integration of 0 and pi over 2, this is 0. Only this remains. If you add this multiple of the opposite of this multiple of sine to the n of x dx on each side of the equation, remember there's a long distance equation here, this equation here is equal to that over there. This is 0. This right here, the opposite of this negative quantity, or at least as negative as we see it as a quantity negative, the opposite of the negative of all this which is the positive of all this, added on each side, set equal to here. There's no cosines anywhere, guys. We got out of here. So let's see what we got here, guys. Let's see what happened. You've got all this, again, on, on, in the document itself, it might be a bit easier you know, to look at. But let's, let's see what we can do. Let's, let's kind of give it a good setup. All right, well, okay, we, you, heard, you heard the speech. It was that long-distance equality, I guess you could say, that long-distance equation that we kind of made out of this thing. Um, you tinker with it a little bit, you guys. And again, I, I have it in the document itself, so let me kind of uh, you know, bypass a little bit of the steps that are, that are going on here, guys. But we'll figure out how we're going to say it. Um, so I want to make sure we can agree on everything that we are doing. Let me, right, so I said add, you know, make the right addition, and you said, okay, well, this guy was the original. Yeah, I remember that. I'm going to throw a one in front of it. I'm going to add the, I'm going to add the opposite of the negative, the quantity n minus 1 times the integral sine to the n of x dx. I'm going to add that on each side. Well, the opposite of negative n minus 1 times the integral sine to the n of x dx added to each side. You got that. That's equal to this thing. Now, we haven't, I haven't, kicked, we haven't kicked this thing out of here yet, but we're about to. Um, let's just write it out. We got this. Plus, now this is pretty important stuff. I mean, um, Pretty important stuff. I write it down correctly first, right? I mean, here we go. We got this n minus 2 of x dx. So, okay, guys, forgive the. Okay, I kind of bunched it up a little bit here, but there it is, okay? All right, we talked about when you're doing this thing from, from 0 to pi over 2, this is out of there. This thing, you add them together. Man, they're not, they're, they're not a whole lot, I mean, yeah, n minus 1, n minus 1 times some, you know, let's call it y, let's call this whole thing y. The quantity n minus 1 times y plus y, well, n minus 1 y plus n minus 1, n minus 1 times y plus 1 times y is, is just n times y. 1 and n minus 1 is just n. Well, didn't need to make quite that speech. I think at that point, it comes somewhat, hopefully somewhat obvious to us. This is huge though. 
This is really big. Go to here. There's your key. Um, there's your key. Now, I, like I said, I, I kind of, I, I kind of got rid of this thing. I don't know. Did I get rid of it too soon? It doesn't really matter a whole lot. You could have done this, guys. Once you had this thing set up and you still got this guy here, let's divide by n on each side. If we divide by n, if we divide by n on each side, well, this thing is still zero. What's the big deal? What's the big deal? The smallest thing n can be, n as in Nancy, is 1. We said m as in mom starts from 0, goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I get all that. But the smallest value of n that can occur, well, I'd say it's, it's an interesting point in its own right, isn't it? Um, how they actually had done that. Let me just see exactly where I want to go with this thing. Because n, I'm a little little apprehensive about where you want to go with that, even, even to find where that's going. Um, if you did, I mean, I could, I, they didn't really, wow, that's an interesting point. They didn't really go there on that, did they? Um, you could say this, even if you're, now this can get kind of messy. You say, well, yeah, what are you talking about, man? You're, you're, you're dividing by n on each side. And the whole situation would be, it's going to come out of there as zero. Okay, we get all that. But, you know, what is this thing for any derivative that you want to take? Um, uh, in, in all circumstances, they didn't really go there. So I want to, I sort of want to go there. It's kind of a special case scenario here on this. Um, You know, n could be zero, and it's not really, n being zero is not a, a matter of concern, because if n was zero, this becomes a, a kind of a trivial situation. If n was equal, at least initially, the way the whole thing plays out, uh, anything other than n equals zero, let's not, there's a couple paths I could take here, I don't want to go there, um, at least cold like this, I don't want to waste what might end up being a, some, some, somewhat of a waste of your time. We could use possibly the Hopital's rule and maybe get there. I got a better idea. Let's not, let's not even go there. Let's use n as in Nancy for our consideration here. n, n as in Nancy, 1 is the smallest thing it could be. So 1 over n would be 1 over 1. And this is always equal to, that's always going to be equal to 0. And n is, the, n is a non-zero number. n is equal to 1. Yeah, I say, well, wait a minute, you've just been delivering a speech here that m could be zero. If m is zero, two times m is in mom plus one is one. Okay, n is equal to one works, okay. Yeah, I know, and if m is equal to one for two m, it's two. Okay, it still works, not a problem. The question is, when you put m equals zero, what's two times zero? Two times zero is zero, and that's gonna be a problem here, but not really, here's why. If n is equal to zero, you guys, n is equal to zero, it's sine to the zero power of x dx. Anything to the zero power is one. That integral right there would be x. You'd evaluate it between zero and pi over two, and you'd get pi over two as an answer. You'd get pi over two as an answer. So you wouldn't have to do this. For all other instances, for n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, for n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you do got to do this, and it will work out. Uh, pretty easy answer right here. If n is equal to 1, uh, if n is equal to 1, that's an interesting point. Uh, if, 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 if n is equal to 1, 1 minus 1, n equals 1, one uh, n equals 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, that's, that's, that's done. That's done. Unless this thing goes toward infinity. Um, 
which I mean that's that's another uh, another matter in its own right. But you're not you're not really worried about this. You're not uh, in situations like this. Um, you know, even right here, if this if this is right here, if n was equal to one, this is to the zero power. That's just that's just one. One minus one is zero. This to the zero power is one. Negative one times this. This the cosine. Uh, has zero minus one. It's a negative one. There, there's stuff you could do here, but you know what? Why are we even making a big deal out of that? You got the sine of if n was equal to one, sine of x dx. That's going to be equal to negative cosine, uh, negative cosine of x, and evaluated between zero and pi over two. And that's an interesting point. Uh, pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Cosine of 0, these are radians. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. 0 minus uh, a negative 1. That's a negative 1 down here. 0, and that's a negative 1 here. 0 minus a negative 1 is 1. Uh, yeah. Because the 1 right here, 1 minus 1 is 0 out of there, this does give you 1. So for a broad range of non, for a broad range of quote unquote non trivial circumstances, this is okay. Okay? Uh, just to play it safe, maybe I'll, I'll just stay with the way they're going. But again, they're, they're, you, can, you can kind of throw out some of this when n equals, well, no, when n equals 0, the sine of n, forgive me, when n equals 0, the sine of 0, uh, forgive me, uh, when n equals 0, the sine to the 0 power of x, the sine, you know, at n equals 0, the integral of the sine to the 0 power of x dx is integrated between 0 and pi over 2, as we said, comes out to pi over 2. The integral uh, of sine to the one of x dx comes out to comes out to one. So sine to the zero of x dx, the integral of sine to the zero of x dx gets us pi over two if you're integrating between the limits of zero to pi over two. And if you're integrating between the limits of 0 to pi over 2 of sine to the 1 of x dx, you get 1. So that's all right. And the other stuff works out fine. The other stuff's not going to come out to be an issue for us when we're doing any of this stuff. It's all going to come out fine. So all of this is valid, you guys. Um, just to play, I mean, that's just something that just crossed my mind. They didn't really, as I recall, that wasn't discussed very heavily. If it was, perhaps I missed it. Uh, but I don't. You know, I just don't remember seeing it, but that doesn't mean it wasn't there. Um, so this is not a big deal, guys. So let me just write it again. And I, in short, nothing has changed, which is good. Um, I'm not looking to contradict any of these brilliant scholars, and I don't have to. I mean, they obviously knew what they were talking about. Um, so let's see what's going to happen here. Uh, you know, and, there's, and it's, again, there's there's some quote-unquote trivial circumstances that aren't going to bother us because we can evaluate them and it comes out just fine. When n is small, like n equals 0 and n equals 1, quite easy. Uh, when n equals 2, even then it's quite easy and it'll, it'll, it'll yield all the results that we need it to yield. We need to be able to do the job. And uh, again, when n equals 0 and n equals 1, we can evaluate it without getting too fancy. When it goes beyond that, it's not that difficult either. And a lot of the stuff we were saying comes out just fine. So I told you I, I kind of threw, threw one thing out. And that's fine. You can still throw it out from the get-go. But since they did not initially, let me not either. They added onto 1 sine to the n of x dx, they added a positive n minus 1. They added on the n the integral sine to the n of x dx they added you know, uh, one, times the, uh, 1 times the integral of sine t 
to the n of x dx having the quantity n minus 1 times the integral sine n sine to the n of x dx. Try saying that three times, I guess. Basically, what they're saying, guys, when you add on to sine to the n of x dx, when you add on to this, which is 1 times sine to the n of x dx, the quantity, the quantity n minus 1 times the integral of sine to the n of x dx, you end up getting this. And you added that on both sides. Remember, that was we wrote, it seems like a long time ago, that we talked about that they were equal like that. Uh, and then I'm going to leave this right here for now. Let's, let's leave it here. We know it's, it's, a short, it's a short ride out the door for this thing. But let's, since they left it, let me leave it. And now we're not going to have an issue. But that is going to come out to zero in all the scenarios that we want. The other stuff, n equals zero and n equals one, we don't care. We know how to evaluate this whole thing from the get-go. That's not a problem. For everything else, this definitely works out just fine for us. And that's what we want. So we can actually figure out what we're doing here. Um, so that's this. Let me just see here. Let me just make sure I'm doing this right. Okay, right, right. Um, sine to the n minus 2, sine to the n minus 2 of x dx. And uh, let's have a look. Let me just make sure I got it right. It looks pretty good to me, guys. It looks pretty good. Uh, then they divide by n on each side. Divide by n on each side. I already put they put the negative out in front here. That's fine. We're not worried too much about that. Again, there, there's uh, there's a few things that were a point of concern. I think legitimately a point of concern, but they're they're trivial in the sense that we can answer the integral sine to the zero. The integral sine to the zero of x dx is going to, between the limits of zero to pi over two is going to be equal to pi over two, and the integral of sine to the one of x dx is going to be equal to one. So one, you know, for, for n equals zero, that integral under consideration, this integral under consideration for n equals zero is going to be equal to pi over two, and for n equals one, it's going to be equal to one. So that was easy enough for the n over the, the, the n equals two and anything beyond that, I think we need to be more elaborate, and we do have a recursive formula to get that job done. Okay, so we don't have to worry about the zero and the one. That was a sticking point for me, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be for any of us. We're not even using zero and one. From two onwards, we're not running into kind of any kind of scenario where we're going to have an issue. We don't have division by zero or anything like that, so we're fine. Um, so you're doing that, and you got this. This is huge. Let me see exactly how far I'm going to go with this stuff. I might not go word for word. I'm going to have to refer you to my notes at some level. We'll see. We'll see how far I can go with that. But we got all this, you guys. All right. I know I've said that's huge a number of times. I'll say it again. This is huge. Uh, here is the integral in a general sense for a huge range of circumstances. For any, for sure, not an issue whatsoever for any n equals 2 or above. And for the other ones, it's trivial. I can get the answers I want to get anyway. So I don't, I'm not even worried about that. Um, what, is, what is of interest <clears throat> in, this whole, uh, in this whole process is how this thing plays out when you're actually doing this thing. Um, you know, how, the, how, how we would actually get it. And we could, we could look at some stuff and how we're actually getting these, the, the answers that are, coming, that are coming forth on this. Uh, that's, an, that's another thing. But again... For the things that are more or less trivial, we're not going to worry about it. We might want to make this into a broader discussion, including the n equals 0, n equals 1. We don't have to. It's already included in the mathematics that we can do easily. Uh, for the bigger ones, the recursive formula is going to, going to come into play. And then when I write down this recursive formula, when I write down some kind of idea of what pi is in terms of an infinite product, we'll see that we were fine with what we said about n equals 0 and n equals 1, and then everything else that was harder to look at comes out just fine with this formula. So I think that's the big thing. This is huge, my friends. This is huge. Once we get to here,
Once we get to here, you do the job. Okay, I think at some point, uh, they're actually, you got this, and we're gonna look at all these different scenarios. Uh, finally, finally we can throw this thing out in a broad range of very important circumstances. Easily and at least, at least for sure, for n equals two, three, four, five, six, anything n being greater than or equal to two where n is a positive integer. And the other ones for n equals zero and n equals one are trivial. We're able to actually bring that out anyway. So we're not worried. This is big. Once you get to here, I'll try to kind of, like I said, I'll, I'll probably refer you more to the notes, uh, but I'll try to give the highlights of the notes too, guys. We'll see. Let's see how this whole thing proceeds and how we're looking in terms of time as well, guys. But you got a situation Okay, we said in a broad range of circumstances, this thing's out of there. This thing's out of there in a broad range of circumstances. Um, yeah, if it's out of there, just write what is there. Absolutely. Let me see. I, guys, I'm always a little apprehensive how good this stuff gets looked at, how good it can be seen right on the edge. I think it's okay, but let's just for the safe, for safety here, let's kind of do this. Well, there seems to be something here that's telling us a lot. Yeah, there it is. This is the key. Do you notice if n is really big, and we care about really big n, I'm not worried as much about n equals 0 and n equals 1, because I can easily find that. And then I'll tack those on to what's going on. For the big stuff, this is for real. This disappears for n being big, at least bigger than or equal to 2. The other ones, I can find it out. I can find it out pretty easily. The other ones, I can find this out real easily. We said it was, you know, for n equals 0, it was pi over 2. For n equals 1, uh, it was 1. You know, that's not a big deal. It's not hard for us to do. And anything else, hey, we got this convenient formula. This allows us to keep going over and over and over, and this is going to pop up. This is big. This is huge. The integral of anything. The integral of sine, the, integr the integral of sine to the n of x, the integral of sine to the n, the integral of sine to the n of x dx is whatever that n is, put on the bottom, and 1 minus whatever that n is on top times the integral of 2 less than n right here. What does that mean? Well, I mean, there's a lot you can say. So wait a minute. There's, there's some kind of, uh, there's a process, there's a process, there's a process, I guess we're trying to say, right? Uh, it's one circumstance. Okay, let's see what we can say here. What does that mean? Well, man, if I keep bringing this thing down, depending on what n is. Now, n could be, let's say n is really, really huge. How huge? Man, think of a big, big positive integer. Now, that integer, you know, big, big positive integers can be, they can be, uh, they can be even or they can be odd. And you will get, it does matter. Because if it's a huge, 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 whole number, positive integer, positive natural number, or positive integer for our purposes, and we'll go anywhere from zero to, 
you know, to, to where, it can, where it can go, you guys. We talked about it. If this is, if this is even, um, you're getting certain answers here. And if this is odd, so let's, let's kind of, um, you know, this is a recursive formula for even or odd integers. So let's call, let me say a couple things. Let me kind of jump out of, out of the notes a little bit. And I don't want to get too adventurous with this because I don't want to lead you astray too much. I don't want to make even a trivial error here and have this thing kind of, kind of blow up on us a little bit. Um, Uh, they talk about even. Well, I don't know. You can debate even. I don't think you know. You want to call even an even? You want to call zero an even integer? I'd rather not. But let's tell you what. Let's start from m. M is in mom, being zero, then going to one, two, three, four, five, all the way to m. Well, wait a minute. One to m, counting one, is m items. Put zero in there. It's m plus one items. There's m plus one items that you're putting in here. Starting at zero, then one, then two, then three. Starting at zero, then going one and two and three. Well, wait a minute. Zero, double it, zero. One, double it, two. Two, double it, four. Three, double it, six. I think you get these are all even numbers. Zero, double it, add one is one. One, double it, two plus one is three. Two, double it, four plus one is five. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen, nineteen. You get the picture, etc. Zero, two, four, six, eight, nine. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay. Carefully proceeding and keeping in mind that for both of these, there will be in each instance m factors in addition in addition to an integral factor at the end, which means there's m plus one factors in both scenarios. I already told you I'm not worried about sine to the zero of x dx, that integral, the sine to the zero of x dx, nor am I worried about, I said, we're not worried about the integral from sine, uh, for, for sine to the zero of x dx, nor are we worried about the integral from the sine or for sine to the one of x dx. Each one's going to have that factor tacked onto them, so you can kind of get rid of the zero scenario. Don't worry about zero here, and don't worry about zero here. Zero here gives you n equals zero. And I ain't worried about that. I know that integral. And one, uh, forgive me, zero here gives me zero, n equals zero. Zero here gives me one, and I'm not worried about either one of those. Because the integral associated with this guy, uh, as we said, was pi over two. And that's important, because we need it. And the integral associated with this guy is one. And that's also important. When you actually, when you're going to end up doing the integrals on this, guys, we end up doing the integrals. We know what we're doing. Okay, we know that. We talked about that. If you want to look at it, and we do, you, you kick this thing around a little bit, and what happens is, this guy initially was this. This guy right here is going to be one smaller than that guy and then that guy on the bottom. Ah, okay. So what do we mean? We mean the sine of n of x dx. We already said it's going to be n minus 1 over n, one less than the top guy and the top guy on the bottom, times the integral and we knew this guy got knocked down. So what is that guy? Well, that guy, that's this guy. That guy is going to be the n minus 1 over n times, wait a minute, didn't we say it? you knocked that guy one down? One down from there, you get this and you leave the bottom as is. And then this guy becomes two less. What's two less than that? To the fourth. Uh-huh. That guy right there, it's the same guy. Uh, 
Like I said, this stuff is sometimes easier done than said, sometimes easier, easier said than done. And in all instances, it's not that hard, but it's kind of tedious to run through it, as you can kind of already, and I think you're already gathering, guys. Uh, what's going on here? There's got to be a pattern here. Uh, I'd like to see the pattern. I think we're going to see a lot of it. What is this? Well, okay, we, we said there's a recursive formula here, guys, and we, we got it here. I'm going to have to erase. You got it. You got the tape. You can come back. Most importantly, you got the notes. The notes have it, so you don't have to even worry about anything getting erased that way. Um, I'll just leave that one up there, I guess. Sort of an arbitrary time is when you actually do this. Uh, what do we got? It's one less than this guy, n minus 5, and it's this guy as is. Okay, well, we're starting to, and we're saying the n is really big. Two less than that. This is like your new n. That's your new n. What's two less than that new n? Wait a minute, something going on here. Um, let's get this guy. Let's get this guy. Let's knock him down one more. And take the n minus the n minus six, subtract one. It's going to be n minus seven, and then the n minus six is going to stay. Knock it down. The n minus six can be n minus seven, and the n minus six stays. Okay, we're we're definitely seeing a pattern here. Uh, this is sine to the n minus eight. I'm going to run out of room, but that's okay. I already know when sine sine to the one. The integral of that or sine to the zero, I know the integral of that. That's not a problem. I think we know where we're going here. Um, it's n minus 1, n minus 1, n minus 3, n minus 5, n minus 7. Yeah, you definitely see what's going on here. n minus 1, n minus 3, n minus 5, n minus 7, the tops, numerators n, n minus 2, n minus 4, n minus 6. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're going to run out of space in the sense that you're going to go to sine of 1. Sine to the 1 of x dx. That's going to equal 1. The integral of sine to the 1 of x dx is going to be 1. The integral of sine to the 0 of x dx is going to be pi over 2. So I got two scenarios going on here. This is playing out. This is playing out uh, in, both, in both scenarios. Let's get this straight. This is playing out in both scenarios. Uh, when you start reaching a place, you are going to run. Look, after m of those, after m moves, after m moves, you're going to get well, after if you knock out m of these, you got into sine squared, and you got to evaluate what that is, what sine squared is. We can there's ways you can do that, but we can also just use the formula that we got. That's not a problem. Yeah. So for m of these, at m minus at, at, for m of these for m plus one, m is one, two, three, four, five, six. M of them. True. M of them. M plus one of them got you down where m is 0. I went 1 to m, that's m of them. At m equals 1, yeah, it's the 2. n is 2. Yeah, I got all that. But at m equals 0, m equals 0, if m equals 0, n is in Nancy is equal to 0. The integral of sine of 0, the integral of sine to the 0 of x dx is equal to pi over 2. So this is what's going on. Let's, let's, let's do it. Uh, let, let's figure this out. I mean, we're looking at two cases here. There's going to be m plus 1. There's going to be the same number of terms now, guys. Once you get down... See, there's an even, there's an odd. I, I'm, just, I'm kind of debating with myself to kind of go a little bit against the notes, um, at least for a little bit, just to kind of give you a feel for what the heck is going on. 
Um, see, you're, you're going to do, well, I, I think the way they do it is nice too. It's really nice. Um, so it's M, you know, remember, there's a total of M plus one factors. One to M is M factors. True, but if you put zero in there, it's M plus one factors. But they're in both cases. Because I'm going to do, do a ratio pretty soon, uh, in a sense. So let's take a look. Just want to argue a little bit where I want to go here, guys. I think we got a good enough setup here, guys. Uh, let me, uh, just debating this a little bit with myself here, guys. Um, there's, there's, there's two scenarios. Let's, I mean, this is going to go on and on. I, how far on and on? I don't know. It depends how big N is, I guess. Um, I want to keep going. I actually want to keep going until something happens. Well, what's going to happen? Uh, do you understand if this odd number, there's an odd number here. The odd number, the 7, there's a 7. It goes, you know, these guys right here, the whole thing, we don't want this thing to go too badly on this. Uh, we we want to have at least something. We don't, we don't want to go... Um, 1 is 2. Um, how, many, how many of them are there, guys, uh, when we do this? I just want to kind of talk to you a bit. Um, I just want to kind of, I want to give you a little bit more of a gut feeling on this thing, man, when it, when it, the way it's proceeding here with this. Uh, you've, you've got this, you subtracted one from it, and you left it as is. Um, in this case, um, There's got to be a place where we stop and this doesn't blow up on us. We were worried that it would blow up on us at some point. I cannot have division by zero. Does everybody kind of get that much? Well, n, be a, n, n better be a pretty big number. Um, uh, we're talking about... This is, if, this, if m were equal to 1, we got 3. n is equal to 3. If m is equal to 0, we got 1. Okay. If m is equal to 1, we got 2. If m is equal to 0, we got 0. So we got to take this thing to a certain place, and then we got to stop. What happens is, if n is a very, very big... Um, at least kind of show you, show you a difference here with what's up there. Now. If n is a very, very big even number, um, once you've done the iteration, where we got, you're going to eventually, if, it, if, it's a, if it's a, just debate, forgive me guys for debating this a little bit with myself where I want to go with this thing. Uh, if N, you know, let's, let's look at this, this. If N is huge, we're just going to keep going. But at some point, you do have to stop. When do you stop? After M of these. If this guy were an even number, if this guy were an even number, what do we mean? From m equals 1 to m, I'm going to get m of these. 
to the point where I'm going to say, I just want to debate this a little bit with myself, guys. If n is going to be a, a positive number, M is going to be an even number, rather. They're all going to be positive. But uh, if M is some real big positive number, 1 to M, there's going to be M, inter M of these products. M of these products. When you get, when you, when you get to M equals 1, um, When you get to M, this is, this is easier done than said, I guess you could say. <coughs> when you get to M equals 1, 1 times 2, M equals 1, after M of these, there's M of these. On the Mth term, you got M is, you know, you're going from very high up, M, all the way down to 1. That's M terms. If, when you get down to M equals 1, way down there. M equals 1. 1 times 2 is 2. And that's going to be, you're going to finally reach here. You're going to reach the integral of sine squared x dx. What the heck does that equal? It means knock it down 1, right? Knock it, uh, so the top gets knocked down one. So we get to here, what have we been doing? We've been knocking these things down one, and then you get the other stuff, and you, you get knocked out the other one. Um, let's just see exactly what we just did, guys. I want to make sure we got that. Yeah, you knock it down one, and you leave what it was. So you knock it down one, and you leave the two alone. Then you subtract two. Wait a minute, what's sine squared x dx subtract 2? It's the integral sine to the 0 of x dx. That's if m, for m term, for m, for m items, m is in mom, for if n is even. If n is even, when you integrate that from 0 to pi, uh, from 0 to pi over 2, right? You get pi over 2 at the end of that. That's this guy. If n is, if n is even, rather. If n is even. If n is even, that's what's going to happen. At the very, very end. Guys, 1, 2. This is at, at m equals 1. At m equals 1... At m equals 1, uh, it was sine to the 2 of x dx, and we did all the monkey business we had to do. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, da, 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 da. m of these, m of these, plus one more, m plus one of these, if it's even, if it's even. Really? Yeah. Yeah. What about if it's odd? Uh, it's an interesting point. You got this. Um, what, time out. N as in Nancy is 2M minus 1. That's 2M right here. This is 2M Remember, n is equal to this. This is for the evens. It's for the evens. If n as in Nancy is 2 times m as in mom for the evens, 2m minus 1 over 2m. 2m 
minus 3 over 2m minus 2. 2m, as in mom, minus 5 over 2m minus 4. Dot, dot, dot. All the way down to here until you got it to here. True. True. What about Okay, so what? Well, let's talk about the odd scenario. N as in Nancy was 2m. What if N as in Nancy is 2m plus 1? I'm going to have to put 2m plus 1 in here. 2m plus 1 minus 1 is 2m. This is 2m plus 1. Uh, 2m plus 1 minus 3 is 2m minus 2. This is 2m. This is 2m minus 2. This is going to be 2m minus 4. This is going to be 2m minus 6. Wait, these are all even on top. The other one was giving me odds on top. It's its own story. Uh, the bottom was giving me evens earlier for n equals 2m. Here, it's going to be odds. 2m plus 1. 2m minus 1. Uh, 2m minus 3. 2 and minus 5. Those are going to be odds. Oh, that's kind of odd. Earlier, with the even scenario, all the numerators, or at least close to all of them, you come down here, we're not going to worry about that, but all the numerators were odd. Yeah. Yeah, even the sign to the 1. All the numerators were odd. All the numerators were odd, because you're going an even number 2m minus 1, an even number 2m minus 3, an even number 2m minus 5. Yeah, those are odd. And here, 2m, 2m minus 2, 2m minus, those are even. Odds on top, even on the bottom, for the even scenario. For the even scenario. The 2m plus 1, so as we said, odds on top, even on the bottom, for the evens. For the odds, even on top, odd on the bottom. Fascinating. Well, let's, let's look at that odd, the odd scenario. The odd scenario is going to eventually reach, uh, it's going to eventually reach, we had, we, we ended up getting the, uh, the, you know, the squared guy, right? And we, uh, let me think about that. Right, 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 right. Uh, here, we ended up getting this. Yeah, we remember that. You always take, you always take, sub from this guy, subtract one from it, and then leave what that guy is on the bottom. So, so the top, Subtract one from it, subtract one from it, and leave what you had on the bottom. So the three stays on the bottom. And then you go the three minus two on top. Three minus two is one. When we did that integral, we found that to be negative cosine x. At pi over two, that was zero. At 0 on the bottom, it was negative 1. 0 minus negative 1 is 1. And you end up getting 1 here. Yeah, what are these, though? Yeah, you got to put in the ends now. This is 2m plus 1, minus 1. Here's 2m plus 1, etc., etc. All right, guys, forgive me. I don't. Hopefully, that makes a little bit of sense. The notes might, might bring it out a little more clearly. When you're doing this song and dance... Remember, we also have a total of m plus 1 factors, just like for the other scenario. All scenarios, all scenarios, m plus 1 factors. That's good, because I can line them up. Well, okay, guys. If you're going to use n as in Nancy to be even, n is equal to 2m. If you're going to use m, if you're going to use n as in Nancy to be even, then it's 2m as in mom. If you're going to use n as in Nancy to be odd, it's 2m plus 1, m as in mom. And we get what we got. And we ended up getting that answer here. 
Well, let's look at it. I'll, I'll try to try to look at it, guys, a little bit. going on okay we, we've I, I hope this makes sense now I mean it, basically you're integrating from 0 to pi over 2 this whole scenario we can get rid of we, we, we you know that's already understood uh, when we're doing this so The integral of sine of 2m of x dx is going to play out the way I just told you it was going to play out. You plug in in place of n as in Nancy, n as in Nancy equals 2 times m as in mom. One low on top, same thing on the bottom. Proceed to the next one. Uh, one lower uh, than the three. So let's see here. We got so that was that was that. So uh, go one lower than the two lower than it was. That'll get you to this, and then keep what you had. I think we know where I'm going here. So we we were doing this. We've we've kicked this around a little bit. One lower than what you had, which is one lower than two lower. So, um, see, you're, you're always, you're always, the top is dropping one lower than what you had. You had 2m. In the other scenario, you got 2m minus 2, so drop one lower than 2m minus 2. Here you got 2m minus 4, drop one lower than that, but keep the 2m minus 4 that you had. All right, well, this can't go on forever, guys. I mean, it's got to, you do it, you do it. You reach the point of the sine to the second power, sine squared, the integral sine squared of x dx. The integral of sine squared of x dx, and that comes out to 1 over 2, and then you drop it, subtract 2 from the 2, you got sine to the 0 of x dx, and that got you the pi over 2. So important. How many are there here? There's m of these and tack that extra one at the end, m as in mom plus one, m plus one of those factors. The other one also has m plus one factors. Here goes. It's the same thing. It's the same n, but now the n is 2m plus 1. What's one lower? Uh, you got to go one lower than that. That's 2m. And the other one stays the same as what you had, and that's 2m plus 1. And that's how that one's going to play. Drop it down. Go two lower than that. And that's some of the stuff we were talking about, guys. That was one lower than something, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, let's have a look. Right. Uh, one was 2m plus 1. What's 2 less than 2m plus 1? It's this. What's 2 less than that? You know, and so on and so forth. 
All right, it's, I'm not, this is, you got to do, it's, it's not incredibly difficult, guys, but you better watch it. Uh, at the end of all that, you're going to get sine to the third power of x, sine to the third, sine to the, sine to the third power of x, or sine to the third, sine to the three, sine to the three of x dx. The integral of sine to the three of x dx, and that's going to come out to two over three times the integral of sine to the one of x, which was one. And there you go. Wow. It's important. The whole premise of the thing, guys, is to, to, this will get you out of the woods. This will get you out of the woods uh, if you look at this. Because um, a lot of ways you can do it. Basically, we're going to reach a scenario where the ratio of this integral, if m is really big, guys, if m if m is really big then you know the ratio of these two integrals is going to be 1 that's the argument and once it's equal to 1 i could take this i could do a lot of things actually but here's one thing i can do i can take i can take this i can take this integral and divide it by that integral and i'm hoping it's 1 or at least i'm hoping it's something so like uh, some constant it turn out that it's 1. But I'm going to take the ratio of this integral and this, I'm going to take the ratio of these two integrals. I'm going to take this integral and divide it by that integral. As m goes to infinity, in the limit, as m as in mom goes to infinity. This integral divided by that integral is going to be 1. And all of that, m plus 1 factors, divided by all m plus 1 of these factors, is going to have a pi over 2 here. From there, I can solve for pi over 2 when I'm there. That's the argument. So I don't know how much longer I can, you know, I, how I'm going to actually try to kick this thing around. But let's, uh, I, I just said it. I, I just said it in a sense. What, what's going to happen is, uh, you know, you got a lot you could say, I guess. You, you have a whole lot you could say. Um, let's actually just do what I just said. Um, Let's take, just watch this and let's just, everybody's going to see this. It's not going to be a problem, guys. I'm going to take this integral as m, as in mom, goes to infinity. I'm going to take this integral and that integral as m goes to infinity. I'm going to take the ratio of these two integrals. I'm going to take this and divide it by that. Then I'm going to take all of that over there and divide it by all of this over here. Yeah, good enough for me. When I'm done with all that, I'm going to solve for pi over 2. I'm just, I'm just going to do some fancy multiplication on each side and solve for pi over 2. So what happens is you end up getting, let's just do the division. Let's take all of this, divide it by all of that. That's including this guy. That's, that's big. That's big. He's already where I want it to be. That's got a lot of what I want. Here's pi over 2. Here's 1. What's pi over 2 divided by 1? It's pi over 2. What's something here divided by something here? Well, it's something. Let's take this divided by that. Let's take this. I'll take all of these. All right, let's see what I got. What I did was, or what they've done, um, is you're going to take the integral from 0 to pi over 2. And we've, never, we've not really been writing that, but that's implied. It's always been there. This is a very interesting scenario. I, I, it's, it's, it, I'm thinking about it right now. There's probably an, uh, another way we can even look at it, in a sense. Um, it's a fascinating scenario, actually. 
Um, I, 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 I'm just, I'm, I'm kicking this thing around here. And I'm just, I'm, I'm almost seeing something uh, that is obvious. Uh, fascinating. Um, how this, how this could probably be played out. Uh, you could, um, uh, the integral of, uh, there's something that's coming across my mind right now, guys. You, you could almost make this a separable uh, integral. The, the integral of, the, oft, oftentimes the integral of a product, the integral, uh, uh, sorry, the product of two integrals in the, right cir in the right circumstances, the product of two integrals is the integral of the product. It's striking me here if this could, uh, if this could indeed be the case uh, as we do this. So uh, very interesting uh, how that would actually uh, play out right here, you guys. I mean, I'm just trying to think here really quickly how I'd want to do this. Uh, if I wanted to do this, I'd say this. Okay, let's, let, let me not go there. I, that's, that's an interesting, there's an interesting exploration that could take place right here that might be easier than we think. I'm not, we're not gonna, that's a path right now during this video I don't wanna go down, but it's, uh, there's something here that perhaps could be done even if it's not the product of integrals being equal to the integral of the product. I didn't say that that's gonna be the case in this scenario. Potentially it could be, potentially it's not. So let, let me not even explore that right now. Um, this right here, if you go here, here, do the division, you got that. Now do this division. Um, yeah, that's interesting. This flips upside down, you got 2m, the quantity 2m squared. This flips upside down, you got the quantity 2m minus 2 squared. This flips upside down, you got the quantity 2m minus 4 squared. And then you got these guys apart by 2. So this is what happens, guys. So we look at it. And let me just, let, let's, let's just explore this a little bit, you guys. I got a little more chalk, I'm sorry. Uh, what is what is happening here? Um, having a hard time getting this out of my mind, but that's that's maybe a, a, that's maybe something in the future to look at, uh, either on our own or, or whatever. But uh, fascinating. Uh, let's let's keep going. Uh, you keep going, and you end up getting what we just said. Uh, the two. You know, look at this. There's a lot of symmetry here, guys. 2m plus 1, uh, I'm sorry, the 2m on the bottom, we you do the division, dividing, <coughs> fractions divided into fractions, when there's all this multiplication going on, each one of these fractions that are part of what's going on here, these are all factors, all multiplication, period. It's all multiplication. When you're dividing a fraction by another fraction, the fraction doing the dividing flips. They all flip. It's going to be the quantity 2m squared on the bottom. The quantity 2m minus 2 squared. The quantity 2m minus 4 squared. You get it. The other stuff flips that way. All right. So let's see here. Um, over. Okay. Uh, yes, I, sh they didn't write, I, I'm going to try to stay, look guys, even when I'm, even when I'm having my questions on this, I'm going to follow them to the letter. I think it's the most efficient way to proceed. And that's the way I have it in the notes. 
this is something else to look at, perhaps. If not, we'll look at the brilliant work of uh, Courant and John and other people that have done this work. Uh, it's good enough for us. I mean, it works. It's provable what they said. Let's stay there. Um, we've got this. Um, here we go. Uh, the next one is two less than that. Uh, or is it? No, it's, it, it's uh, going to be, forgive me here, guys. Uh, uh, let me try, go between the two here. 2m minus 2, 2m minus 2. Here, you guys, uh, 1 is 1 greater than that. And there's a difference of 2 right here. Uh, let me see here, guys. Uh, this is 2m. Let me just try to stay here uh, on the right path here, guys. Right. So you got that. So this is 2m minus 3 and 2m minus 5. Okay. Let's see. Let me just make sure. Yeah, right. Uh, that's all that. Dot, dot, dot. Then you got pi over 2 divided by 1. Remember, there were m plus 1 factors. On the bottom here, on the, on, the, on the right side of the bottom here, there's m plus 1 fractions. On the top here, on the right side, there's m plus 1 factors. On the right sides, uh, on the right side of each equation, there is a total of m plus 1 factors for this one and m plus 1 factors for that one. And you do that, you get to here. Guys, the rest, multiply by the reciprocal of all of this and have pi over 2 by itself. And when you do that, we get a scenario Let me try to get, be pretty explicit in some of the stuff I'm saying here, guys. Uh, we get this, which is huge. Well, you're multiplying by the reciprocal of that stuff. It's, it's not going to be pretty. Just be careful. Look, let's just make a long story short. Whatever's on the bottom is going to be on the top, and whatever's on the top, whatever was on the bottom is going to be on the top. Whatever was on the top is going to be on the bottom. So, yeah, these do look familiar. One's underneath. They're just, they're just turned upside down. Yeah, that's what the reciprocal does. So you, you got this. Yeah, you, I mean, you know where I'm going, guys. I, you know. Um, 2m minus 4, 2m minus 4, 2m minus 3 here, 2m minus 5. Okay, it's, it's tedious, and I, I, it's easy to lose your step, too, if you're not careful with it, you know? That's for sure. Um, dot, dot, dot. Well, eventually it ends. It ends in a little bit of a mess, but we're making this claim. And we're going to make the claim, you can find this, now these are big, they got to be big. They got to be big. Yeah, okay. Really, huh? Um, 
Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's, there, there's a, a lot that could be said right here. Um, just one, I, I, I'm, I'm sort of arguing. I'm, I'm still kind of stubbornly staying with something. I, I, I'm just, it's kind of crossing my mind. There's got to be a way to look at this. But let me try to figure this out, you guys. I'm thinking... Just want to think about just one thing, guys, really quickly, if I could, if you don't mind on this. Um, okay, looks good. Looks pretty good, guys. Uh, look, they, they kind of make it clear. We have got, now we, now we will show you know, now we really want to show you guys that this guy right here, that's equal to 1 as m goes to infinity. And there's ways to look at it, and they, they go into it. Now, how you, really? Yeah, it's not too bad, actually. Um, The way they go about it, is different from what I was saying, but I, I, I think what they, what they say is really beautiful. So I think yeah, you, you have to go there. I was thinking there was a shortcut. Perhaps there is. Uh, I, the way they're going about it is not really a shortcut, so it's kind of it makes you a little apprehensive about if there is more of a shortcut for this. Look, uh, who cares? We can, we can find this. There's a way we can find this. Uh, there has got to be a way we can find that, you guys. Um, as we look at it, let's figure out what we can say about it, guys, as we look at it. You want to say that, that the limit as m goes to infinity is that. So let's, we've got, look, everybody okay with this? If we got this thing, if we got this, if we got this thing right here turning out to be 1, if this turns out to be 1, then 1 is right here, and we got a whole, whole dance going on here. Uh, you know, how much of a dance is it? Well, we said there was m plus 1 terms, m plus 1 terms. This is one of the m plus 1 terms. Um, this is important, actually. This, this is pretty important as well. There's m, there were m plus 1 factors, rather. m plus 1 factors. Uh, this is the m plus 1 factor, or the first factor, depending on what you want to call it. This is the m plus 1 factor, or the first factor, if you want to call it. Depending on what you want to call it. I'll say it at the very end, I'll say it's the m plus 1 factor, and this is the m plus 1 factor too. The other ones are m factors here. If there's m of these, um, if there's m of these, this is associated, uh, there, there's going to be m is big, and as we proceed, there's going to be m of these here, so at the very end, at the very, very, very end, it's going to be the number m. So you're really subtracting, uh, there's m of these, the top, so basically if there's m plus 1 of these, there's an m minus 0, the quantity m minus 0, quantity m minus 0, the quantity m minus 1 doubled, the quantity m minus 2 doubled, until you get to the very, very uh, end of this. So you would say, and if there's m plus 1 of these, at, the, at m equals 1, you're looking at a scenario where basically, like I said, at, at 0, uh, so at the first, first scenario, subtracting 0. Uh, second scenario, subtracting 1, because it's 2 times 0 uh, for this guy, uh, for the end of it. 
uh, 2 times 1, subtract 2 times 1. So basically you got m minus 0 right here. And that's 2m. You got m minus 1, and that's 2m minus 2. And you're going to get you're going to get m plus 1 of those. Well, true, but there's already m plus 1 right here. So m of these, from 0 to m minus 1, would get you there. Uh, so you'd get... Uh, that's one. You got two. So you end up getting here, it's going to be two times two. Uh, you know, the very, very last one is going to be two times two. Uh, the other one is going to be <clears throat> uh, one, one more than that and then two, uh, two less than that. So you're going to have to be careful here where we actually got that. Let me see here for a second. Uh, right. One more than that and then, uh, one more than that and one less than that. I'm sorry. So one more than that and one less than that. That is going to happen uh, for M for this, for this whole scenario here, guys. Uh, what you're going to get when you actually, when you're doing all this to get the pi over 2, and then you're hoping that last guy, this guy right here, is going to be 1 over 1. But it's kind of, you're, you're hoping the scenario is going to be, you know, if you double this, you got 4 times 4. Uh, and we go here. Uh, that's a... F uh, that's a 5, and the other one's a 3. Then we got 6 times 6. Remember now, look at it. They're even. they got to be. The other ones are odds. Uh, one more than that is 7. One less than that. Plus dot, dot, dot. You know, they're gonna, it's going to come up, it's gonna come up pretty big. I mean, it's, it's it, the, the way it's going to play out. Um, and these are going to be big. I mean, they're going to be, it's going to be, um, forgive me here. Yeah, right. Uh, at the end, at the end of the whole song and dance, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be all that stuff we had. And that's going to be 2M. It's a mess. It's not really difficult, guys. Um, this is 2m plus 1. This is 2m minus 1. Uh, and that's what we were doing right here and, and everything else, the whole, the whole dance here that's going to be happening. Um, you know, there, there's, there's things can be done. I mean, if you, if you, and if you shift this over, here's a 3, here's a 1. Yeah, but if you shift this 3 over, I mean, look, man, if you just take it, now you're going you're gonna to come up short a little bit. But not too bad. You can figure out what you're going to do. But you can, you can have the 3. Here's the 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Have the 3 come over here. Have the 5 come over there. Have the 7 come over here. You got the 6s. You got the 7s. You got the 4s. You got the 5s. You got the 2s. You got the 3s. But now, remember now, you shift it over. So you kind of have something going on on top uh, that's, that's a little different scenario than what you had. You, you shifted one of them over. And what you got is uh, you, you're, you're shifting the small one uh, over. So you, what you end up getting is you got a, two, uh, a, a 2m plus 1 here and a 2m plus m somewhere. If you, there's ways you can do this, guys, and, and we'll get into that. Once you do that, at the end, now you're hoping that this ratio is 1. At the end of the day, that's going to give you this. And that's the, that's, that's the whole argument here. All right. Well, 
Let me do a couple things here, guys, and we'll, and we'll see how we want to do this. Um, again, I don't want to, I'm already keeping you a lot longer than I sort of was planning, but I mean, I, some of this stuff, I think, I think it's just worth looking at. Um, so we look at it, we're seeing how it's going to play, guys. Now, again, you, you plug in, if it plugs in like I told you, you're going to get what I told you. And, uh, and from there, we can, you know, there's a number, you know, period. I mean, if it, if it, if it works the way I told you, there's, there's certain things I've already kind of told you. Uh, and that's simply the way it is on this thing. So let's see, let's look at the brilliant work. I think it's Courant and John on this one. Let me just make sure. Well, at least if I'm citing these people, I want to cite the right people on it. Uh, yeah, the brilliant work of, of Richard Courant and Fritz John. I mean, awesome, awesome work, guys. Um, we have got to show... We want to show that the limit I want to show that the limit as m goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to pi over 2 this thing right here Yeah, limit as m goes to infinity, it's going to be 1. And the way they do it, the way they look at it, they say, okay, we're only observe, we're going from 0. We're going to observe this. We're going to say it's not going to, we're not going to get into too much trouble here if we observe that, you know, let's, let's, let's not quite go to pi over 2, but go just short of it, and it should be good enough to get the same size answer. They're saying that. I don't remember them arguing that too much. But if you're going to go here, then the sine of x, it's always less than 1, because the sine of pi over 2 is 1. And I'm talking about x that's less than pi over 2. You say, well, wait a minute. Your integrals are from 0 to pi over 2. Well, I can get as close as I want to 0 and pi over 2, respectively. I can get as close as I want. I can get so close that the integral for all practical purposes is equal to that. I'm not going to have any issue. Okay? Um, so we know that the, if you take the sine of pi over 2, you got 1. The sine of x is this. Let's just take the sine of each one of these items, and then you got that. We also know that in general, if you take something to a particular power, uh, let's not go there yet. Okay, let's take it to a particular power. Well, the more power you take it to, these are positive integers, guys. The bigger the positive integer under consideration, it becomes smaller because the sign is never equal to 1 here. It's equal here, but you're not even going there. And that's their argument. For right now, you're not even going there. So what we can say is okay what we can say guys is that right there is less than this and that's less than one it's just I mean if you're talking about sine of x is equal to this yeah that's true if I take this to one higher power involving sine of x, sine of x is always less than 1 in this configuration. You said, oh yeah, sine of pi over 2 is 1. So what? That's 1 out of an infinite number of places, and we're not even counting it. We can go just short of it, and we can bring it to the limit and still have the answer to the integral, even if we don't quite get to pi over 2. We can do that. We can get as close as we want to it. Um, so if that's the case, you guys, uh, if you were to integrate, so it's, it's saying something like that, uh, and it's saying something like this. And that's less than this. because The smaller the power, the more you got. And that's less than 1. True. 
True, at the very least, they're pretty close to each other. If you integrate each of these, and integrate this, which is going to be pi over 2. They didn't really, they sort of opted away from that one. They didn't, they didn't quite, we, we go further. But uh, basically, basically, my friends, I mean, once we get to here, it's less than or equal to this, less than or equal to that. If you integrate this from 0 to 2 pi, you get pi over 2. That's true. Um, they, they didn't really, they didn't put it in there again, so I'm not going to put it in there. So basically, they said this, guys. They said if you're going to do that, you got sine integral sine 2m plus 1 of x dx, uh, you know, 2m, you know, the whole thing here. So let's kind of. Sorry, guys. I'll take a shortcut eventually on this. I just, just want to kind of give you some of the foundation. Um, right. Um, might be equal. You know, we don't, we're not sure. But we got this. We say it's close enough. That we, we, We're going to say it's bigger, very likely. It ain't going to be any smaller. And that's where they're going that way on this. And it's the same argument right here. 0 to pi over 2. It has to be. Logically, you have to do this if you do it. One you have to do for the other because one's one less than the other one. So the arguments I'm making is what I'm making here. Well, you've got all these. Um, true. When you divide it, Uh, when you take this, you're going to divide them. You're going to divide it by this thing right here. You're going to take this quantity and divide zero by this quantity. You're going to divide this quantity by this quantity. You're going to divide this quantity by that quantity, and you can divide that quantity by this quantity right here. And what they end up saying is and there's a lot they're saying actually let me just kind of we somehow talk about this you got the zeros here you got the whole thing um, let's talk I mean so you're, you're doing all this this thing's going to be equal to one trust me I you know Hate to tell you the end of the movie, but I think you're going to see it, and you're going to see it in the notes as well. You do this, you divide all of the, you divide all the way across here by this quantity right here, sine to the 2m plus 1 x dx, the integral of sine to the 2m plus 1 x dx. You divide that at everywhere. Well, we're going to say it's a non-zero number here. Zero divided by this is still zero. This divided by itself is one. This divided by this is greater than or equal to 1. You know, this divided by that is going to be greater than or equal to 1. And this guy right here uh, divided by that one over there is going to be greater than or equal to 1. So what are we going to say here? We've got to prove this. Let me get there for you guys. Uh, they end up saying one of them's one. They, they don't worry. They're all greater than zero, right? We all said they're they're, they're going to be they're all going to be greater than zero. So we're not worried about that. Uh, we ended up finding out the one that was being divided by itself is indeed equal to one, and that's less than this guy, zero pi over two sine two m of x dx, 0 pi over 2, 
uh, sine 2m minus 1 x dx, or plus 1. Uh, right, we said it was going to be greater than, than 1. Right, that's going to be, so this guy right here was indeed going to be equal to 1. That's going to be equal to 1. And that's going to be less than or equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 uh, of sine 2m of x dx over the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of, so we did this in a rather interesting fashion, I thought. I, it makes complete sense. Um, we started looking at it as we did. So let's see. Let me just kind of write this. 2m plus 1 of x dx. And that's going to be less than or equal to integral 0 to pi over 2 sine 2m minus 1 of x dx. And again, it's the same thing on the bottom that we had, the sine 2m plus 1 dx. Wow, OK. Uh, true, this was plus 1 right there, you guys. So that, that one right there, that one right there just got me the 1. Uh, that we wanted. So, and what we have there you go, that's the one. Then they say do you remember aha, this does it, yeah, this, this does it, it's pretty important. We remember that the integral from 0 to pi over 2 for at least really big numbers, right, really big integers, really big positive integers, the sign to the n, the sign to the n of x dx is this. Yeah, we've done this a while ago. We got this one. Here we're explicitly writing the limits of integration. They were always implied, you guys. They were always implied and they were always there. True. So if that's the case, guys, this gets you out of the woods right here. This guy right here is forgive the, the writing here, it's kind of not quite what it was, but let's, you know, we got the one. And this is dx right here. Okay. Um, this is 2m minus 1, and this is 2m plus 1. Wait a minute. 2m plus 1 is 2 more than 2m minus 1. Yes, that's true. Yeah, and this is the big one. This is the biggest of all of them. We already said that when you exponentiate, you lose, you lose size when you got the sine function. The sine function is fractional compared to 1. So when you square a fraction or cube a fraction or any fraction that's less than 1 in terms of absolute value, its absolute value gets smaller. If it's a positive, you know, any, 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 any fraction squared or cubed or anything that's less, any fraction that's less than 1, when you exponentiate it to a positive integer, take it to a, you, you take it to the power uh, you exponentiate, you put it to a positive integer, you, you take it to a particular power that's a positive integer, if the fraction's less than 1, its absolute value continues to decrease. This guy is the biggest sine to the 2m minus 1, the integral of sine to the 2m minus 1 x dx is bigger than sine to the 2m x dx 
you know, the integration of sine to the 2m x dx is smaller or maybe equal, but it, 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 it's less than or equal to the integral of sine to the 2m minus 1 of x dx. Sine to the 2m minus 1 of x dx, that integral is bigger than, certainly not smaller, it's at, most e it's at least equal to it or bigger than sine to the 2m x dx integrated. Lower power here means tends to be bigger. This will be bigger than or equal to this, and this will be bigger than or equal to 1. Why is that? Because this guy's bigger than that one. It le it's as big as that one, or this integral cannot be any smaller than this integral. At most, this can equal that, but it can't exceed it. It's going to be or less than that. Big, big divided by small is going to be bigger than 1. It might be equal to 1. It might be equal to 1. So uh, for our purposes, you know, this ratio cannot, cannot be less than 1. The smallest it can be is equal to 1. In numerous circumstances, it's bigger than 1. As m goes to infinity, I'd like to know what happens. That's a good question in its own right. As m goes to infinity, how big is this thing? You know, what is the ratio? But sine, remember what we said before we even did integrals, sine to the 2m of x, just this, the top one, sine to the 2m of x is bigger than sine to the 2m plus 1 of x. Just like sine to the 2m minus 1 is bigger than sine to the 2m plus 1. I'll say even more than that. Sine to the 2m minus 1 of x is bigger than sine to the 2m of x. The smaller it is, the bigger the answer is going to be. Now the question is, does the ratio approach 1 as m goes to infinity? Okay, It's a good question. Well, we know on one of them it turns into 1 because it was sine to the 2m plus 1, sine to the 2m plus 1 of x dx integrated divided by, between the limits of 0, from 0 to pi over 2, divided by the same integral, sine to the 2m plus 1 of x dx integrated from 0 to 2 pi. Anything divided by itself is 1. We knew that. And we said this guy would be bigger than or equal to that because this 2m sine to the 2m of x is bigger than sine, than sine to the 2m plus 1. And sine to the 2m minus 1 of x is bigger than sine to the 2m of x. So if you divide by the same thing on each side, Sine, 2m, sine to the 2m plus 1 divided by sine to the 2m plus 1 of x, the integral of sine to the 2m plus 1 of x dx divided by the integral of sine to the 2m plus 1 of x dx. Yeah, anything divided by itself is 1. That's the same thing on the bottom. This is bigger. We said that earlier. Sine to the 2m of x is bigger than sine to the 2m plus 1 of x. And sine to the 2m minus 1 is bigger than sine to the 2m, sine to the 2m plus 1 of x. And sine to the 2m minus 1 is a bigger answer than that one even. That's why we said this guy's the biggest. It's greater than or equal to this. And that's greater than or equal to something divided by itself. Well, we're going to say they're all equal to 1. If we get this guy to be equal to 1, you guys, if we get that guy to be equal to 1, if this guy's equal to 1 and that guy's equal to 1, then this right here is equal to 1. And that's what we want to be equal to 1. And that's what we want to be equal to 1. Well, how's that guy equal to 1? Well, this is too bigger. This is too smaller than this guy. Uh, you know, if you subtract 2 from 2m plus 1, you get 2m minus 1. True. So what? <laughs> well, if that's the case, didn't we say that if this guy is too smaller than that guy, just like this guy is too smaller, just like that right there, guys, just like that is too smaller than this. Just like this right here, guys, is too smaller 
than that, let's, let's take a look. Let me divide the two. And I end up getting, I'm going to divide by this guy on each side. Uh, actually, for, yeah, why not? For now, I can do that. Um, I'm going to divide by that on each side. So you get 0 pi over 2. Yeah, divide the other one. That's not quite what I want, but I'll get there. True. If these two are equal, and they're non-zero. They're both non-zero. There's, the, you know, both non-zero answers. If these two are equal, the reciprocals are equal, and that gives you this. Um, The reciprocal of both sides. Um, and you end up getting it. And you're, you're going to be fine. I mean, remember now, n, n is not going to be 0. Uh, the smallest that n can get, um, forgive me, n could be 0, right? I mean, we, we, had, we had said that earlier. Um, but actually, no, we don't care. We, that's, not our, that's not our business. If, if n was equal to 0, I'm doing this problem very easily. I can, there's, I guess there's, there's stuff I can do. Um, you know, if you're going to call something, if n, is equal, if n is equal to 1 or n equal to 0, that's, that's okay. Uh, I want very large numbers here. Why do I want very large numbers? Didn't we say we're trying to find where this goes, the limit as m goes to infinity? The limit as m goes to infinity. So it ends up becoming, you flip them, you know, if this is true, get the reciprocal of each side and set them equal to each other. Yeah, take n toward a very, very big number. What's a very, very big number divided by a very, very big number, subtract 1 from it? Look, let's get something straight. Let's say n is 2. What's 2 divided by the quantity 2 minus 1? 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 divided by 1 is 2. That's hardly 1. Yeah, I know. But what if n is a million? What if n is 1 million 1? Let's say n is 1 billion 1. And n is 1 billion 1. 1 billion 1 minus 1. 1 billion 1 minus 1 is 1 billion. This is 1 billion 1. This is 1 billion 1 minus 1. 1 billion 1 divided by 1 billion is 1 and 1 billionth. 1 and 1 billionth is tiny. Put a trillion in there. If this is a trillion and this is a trillion also, if this, is one, if this is 1 trillion 1, and this is 1 trillion 1 minus 1, 1 trillion 1, 1 trillion, you know, 1 trillion 1 divided by 1 trillion is 1 and 1 trillionth. You get the picture. That's going to be equal to what this, when they're that far off from each other, it's going to be there. That's going to be this. It's going to be the guy we got earlier, then this mess right here, Put right here, right? Uh, the sine 2m x dx integral 0 to pi over 2. Sine you know, uh, integral sine 2m uh, plus 1. Uh, whatever this is going to be. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that one, right, uh, in a second. Uh, plus 1. This goes to a limit from a big, a, a, a somewhat bigger number, and as m goes to zero, it is from the from from a high number. It's going down to one. 
wait a minute. If one is greater than or equal to this, and this is greater than or equal to one, the only way this can be sandwiched between the two and be greater than or equal to one, and at the same time less than or equal to one, that guy right there has got to be equal to one. And that's where they got that equal to one. And that's where they got that equal to one. They did, I, the notes is a little different. I went a little off uh, from the notes here. They ended up taking, you could have put, the, you could have put this in here, uh, not in terms of, now again, you just want M to be really big. So I'm not worried about something crazy happening where N is equal to one. If N equals zero, I'm starting to have problems. Zero minus one is negative one. Uh, zero, I really got a problem if it's equal to one. One, one minus one is, I don't care about those. Those I can figure out easily. When n goes to infinity, none of those problems occur, and this reality holds that we've done earlier. So this is the way I kind of showed that answer. They showed it a little bit differently. They, they, said, uh, they said if you want to look at this thing, um, you, can call, uh, you can call the whole process, the way, the way it all worked out. Um, you know, how's that all going to play out, guys? For here, uh, this scenario right here, they, this, guy's, this guy's n and this guy's n minus 2. This guy is n and this guy's n minus 2. And, and, and you could kind of go about it that way when you're, when you're trying to get it done. Um, and how would you play that? Well, if n... Uh, let, let, let's actually just look at it for, for the heck of it. If we said that for this scenario right here that we're trying to discover, this is n, this is n minus 2. So n right here is 2m plus 1. This is, you know, the, the, whole, the whole way you'd want to look at it. Uh, they're off by two, so if if this was if this n if this n was two m plus one, well two m plus one minus two is two m minus one. Two m minus one there. Okay, so what do we got? Well, we got two m minus one, and we got two m plus one. That's the n. That's the n minus two. 2m plus 1, 2m minus 1. And what does that equal? Um, what it equals is, on the minus side uh, uh, of this guy, what it, what it happens is, that to first get that scenario here, the 2m plus 1 would be right here. The 2m plus 1 would be right here. The 2m plus 1 minus 1 would be 2m over 2m plus 1. It would be a scenario of essentially that. It's, it's essentially you're finding, so when you were finding this ratio, n over n minus 1, it would be 2m plus 1 over 2m. Right. And the limit as n goes to infinity and as m goes to infinity, the limit here is 1. limit, you know, n goes to infinity, which is the same as limit m goes to infinity in, in this scenario. Here. It's the same thing. Remember, we said 1 trillion plus 1 divided by 1 trillion. 1 trillion 1 divided by 1 trillion is 1 and 1 trillionth. Well, as m goes to infinity, uh, it's just the, 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 that ratio, 1 over trillions, even on the big side, it becomes 1 plus 1 quadrillionth. Uh, or say so on and so forth till you get to one. Okay, that's where they're that's where they're coming from here, guys. Um, you saw me set up some of the stuff, and so let me. We looked at it. We got we got. There's a lot of scenarios here. Let's let's just perfectly. Let me just say some of what I said, guys. I'll bring this to a close for you. So it's ticking. Again, I've done this a little bit longer than I thought I would, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, that's why you got the fast forward button, I guess, if you want to be doing that. Uh, you look at it, you got this, you got all this that I wrote. 
Uh, I'm basically going to repeat the, the conclusion we drew. This concludes to 1. And you can, like I said, you can play it a whole bunch of ways. If n is really big, we're not worried about n equals 1 or n equals 0. We're not worried about it. Because we're talking about huge, huge numbers, we're trying to get a limit here as n goes to infinity, which is the same as saying the limit is m, as in mom goes to infinity. If n is equal to 2m plus, if n is in Nancy is equal to 2m plus 1, 2 times mom, you know, m is in mom, 2m, 2m plus 1 is the n, and then the n minus 1 will be 2m plus 1 minus 1. So n is 2m plus 1, and n minus 1 is 2m. So it's 2m plus 1 divided by 2m. 2m plus 1 divided by 2m is 1, 1, and 1 plus 1 over 2m. Well, yeah, well, if m gets really huge, you get, so there's a lot of ways to go, guys. I mean, when we're looking at that. Don't want to beat it up too much. Forgive me on that, but uh, you know, when we looked at it, the n over n minus one, the n was two m plus one. One less than that is two m. M goes to infinity. The limit of two m plus one over two m. That's one plus. 1 over 2m. Well, if this is huge, 1 over something huge is pretty trivial. Um, in the limit, that's equal to 1. Uh, as n goes to infinity, you know, you could kind of play the same game. n is the quantity n minus 1. The quantity n minus 1 plus 1 over the quantity n minus 1. This this, all of this divided by all of that is 1 plus 1 over n minus 1. Well, 1 is 1, and if n is really, really huge, minus 1 doesn't change too much, 1 divided by something huge in the limit, and that's what I was trying to say there, guys, uh, on some of that. And just, just look at, I, I think the notes are going to be, I'm, I'm sure the notes are going to be more efficient on this stuff. Notes are usually, I talked to a colleague of mine who's very, very knowledgeable about a lot of stuff and same, same opinion the person had. Uh, she had said, yeah, notes are better sometimes. It's just, you kind of go on your, own, on your own pace on that, guys. So you're doing this, you found out what it is, and that gets you there. That, that really does get you there, guys. Um, so let's take a look. The end of the day you guys you, you play the games here with this thing um, there's a lot that gets said I guess um, a lot of tricks to it you're basically doing this pi over 2 and uh, again we were we were tinkering with this thing enough already you saw me get there you saw me in some sense, in, in, a, in a more informal sense, in a more informal sense, you saw me already get here. Um, but we did it. I mean, we, we looked at it, how this thing's coming apart. And it's, there's a lot of symmetry on top. There's a lot of symmetry on the bottom here. Uh, this just goes on either side of this, and this is just going to go on either side of that. Um, And these guys are going to be, you know, it's going to be one less and one greater. This is one greater than that, and this is one less than that. And the tops are just the same, and they go, they're all even. Look how that happens. It's all even on top. Um, uh, and again, so on and so forth, guys. Well, okay, we're going. Uh, keep multiplying here. 
and uh, at some point you're going to have the sixes and on either side of that there's going to be a seven and there's going to be a five here you're going to have the fours and on either side of that there's going to be a five and there's going to be three you saw me do this um there's a one at the end of this whole song and dance i mean you got two right here and at the end of that you're going to get you're going to have the three and you're going to have a one uh and at the end of all yeah right you're gonna have a three three and you're gonna have a one and at the end of this you're gonna have a one uh i know we had a pi over two and a, and a, and, a, and a one that's different we're doing a ratio here we already got it so we got the pi um that's it they're saying why well, you know if, if that's the case and I wrote it in a little different order than they wrote. I wrote it a little different way uh, than they're writing it. They're, they're, they're starting it. Well, no, I, they all, we all agree, I think. Uh, we got this. They kind of start here, and then it builds up. It builds up to something like this way down the line. And this goes on forever. This goes on forever. And we got this right here. Well, yeah, that's true. And the limit, you're going to take the limit here. As, as m goes to infinity. Well, fantastic, guys. I mean, we got it. We got a pretty good feel for this. We got what we wanted at the end of all that. We got that one. And that, that was the one, actually. That whole long song and dance was getting me the one down here. So we're good. Whether it's there or not, it's, it's okay. It's already implied to be there. There it is. And then so we got that. Um, when you do it, and there's a lot, I, I mean, the way, the way this can get broken up, they, it goes a whole bunch of ways. Uh, we already agreed... We already agreed that 2m plus 1 over 2m, the limit as m goes to infinity is 1. If you flip it upside down, you're getting the same limit. This is going from low, climbing up to 1. This is going from high, climbing down to 1. But in the limit, as you go to infinity, The numbers are big, it's going to happen here. So that's, that's kind of of interest that way. And uh, what they end up doing, guys, I just try to, I don't want to overwhelm you with this stuff. Um, remember what we said we could do if we're, if we're clever about this. If we're clever about this, we can... Uh, you know, we can, we can slide... We can slide this guy. There's a one right here, right? I mean, there's a one somewhere. There's a two right here. Uh, there's a one. Hey, what the heck? I mean, you can even put the one in there and make it really easy to, to, to deal with. A one over one. Um, you, can, you, can, you can see a lot of stuff here, I guess. Um, Yeah, I mean, there, you, you could, there's a whole lot you can do right here, guys. I mean, I could put a 1 right here. I could put 1 times 1 over 1 and just slide everybody over. Um, look, um, the 1 is here. If you took, we said there was a 1 there. We know that's the case right here, guys. This is going to be kind of important as we proceed. We know that, we know that, um, so what? Well, I'll tell you what, why don't you start here, and we said there is a total, as we said, there was, there was a one right there, uh, as far as the items are concerned, let me think about this.
Yeah, everything works. Let's see how many we got here. I think, I think the way we've set this thing up is we could set it up. M of these, and it plays all here. All of this plays this way. All the way down to here. That's Now there's, now, ladies and gentlemen, there are M, as in mom, M factors. M factors equal to that. You divided, you did some stuff and you've got the M plus one factors. You got one of the factors by itself. One of the factors in essence was pi over two. So you had M plus, M plus one factors. You got the pi over two by itself. Now there's M factors over on the other side, M of them. Sure. What is, what is two times one? Two. Two times one? Two. Oh yeah, two M's the look. 2m is the look, m is really, really big, <clears throat> m, m goes to infinity, but if m is on the small side, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 1 is 2. What's this? This is 2 times 1 plus 1, which is 3. This is 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 1. Okay, sounds good, there's m of them. What do you say? You pick all, the, all these bottoms here, just slide them across. The same division is taking place, but just leave you know, leave, leave, leave a, a two, the quantity 2m, the quantity 2m times the quantity 2m over the quantity 2m plus 1. Leave these three alone. Leave these three as is. Uh, we already said that 2m... 2m, 2m divided by 2m plus 1, as m goes to infinity, is 1. So that 2m right here will just... As m, goes to, as m goes to infinity, m as in mom goes to infinity, 2m divided by the quantity 2m plus 1 is 1. This is 2m. This is 1, this is 2m. This guy slides over, the 2m minus 1, over to here. Slides over... Slides over to here, and I got 2m minus 1, the quantity 2m minus 1 times the quantity 2m minus 1. He slides over, and I got the quantity 2m minus 3 times the quantity 2m minus 3. Wow, it's one less than that. That slides over, and the same thing happens. This guy slides over, slides from here, and I got the 6s here and the 7s here. Um, slides over, I got the 4s here, I got the 5 here. The other one slides over, I got the 2s here and the 3s there. And the one slides over, and I guess I could say there's a one there. That's okay. The one can slide over. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really hurt anything. It's over there. In fact, it, it doesn't hurt anything enough that you just don't, you kind of ignore it. So what you got here is, you know, it slides over, and you, you still got M ratios. Yeah. Uh, this ratio here with the M is going to be as M goes to infinity, that's one, the 2M stays, and then everybody else is moving. Uh, is moving like what? Uh, it's, that's, that's 2M. This is uh, 2m minus 2 uh, squared over the quantity 2m uh, minus 1 squared. 2m minus 4, the quantity, squared over 2m minus 3 squared. Uh, at the end of that, I got 2 squared over 3 squared. I got a total of m products. Uh, m minus 1 of those products is all these. So there's M minus 1 products, M is in mom minus 1 products, here, and then this was the mth one. 
ah, maybe I can do something here and make this thing work. I mean, I, I, mean, I, call it, I mean, I can put this and give it that format. All right, well, that's kind of the look. They, they gave that look. They write it in different ways. Um, I got it. You know, they stop right there, that's, which is good. I mean, mercifully, guys, they, they stop right there for us. Uh, the, the way this whole thing plays out, I mean, you can, you can write it a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, they, they, go on, they go on the other side. They kind of make this thing ascend, ascend to bigger numbers. And, uh, and, and that's of interest, you know, how that all plays out. Um, just trying to figure out exactly where we'd want to stay with that. Yeah, right. I mean, this is, this is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the way that plays out, how big a number. Yeah, I mean, I guess the approximation, you want to see how good the approximation is, though. When you're doing something like this, there's got to be trying to think of a way here you can kind of look at it but uh looks like it's staying right there so this, this can this can get us some very good numbers now, this is going to infinity and that's that's basically where it's at guys so the, the way they write it um and there's a whole bunch yeah they, they write it a bunch of ways here but for our purposes uh what we're looking at All right. Um, pi over two, and they're just telling us the limit as m goes to infinity. And yeah, they basically they guys it's the same exact thing I just wrote. Forgive the the repetition on this, but let's let's talk. Yeah, now that's, that's important. We did stop right here for these guys getting squared. This guy came out, this guy came, this guy canceled, you know, to one. I mean, just this guy, not all the pi. I mean, pi is what it is. I mean, pi over two. But this guy canceled the one. This guy went over here as everybody went over. You saw me walk everybody over. This cancels to 1. This guy went over, and the 2m stays here. So the 2m minus 2 was 1. And there's probably, a, and there's, and not only, there's not a probably about it. There's a lot of ways you can write this. Um, but this is the way. I'm going to kind of just follow verbatim what I saw. You got this right here. Um, times 2m, they don't have it in parentheses. I don't know, man, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to, uh, well, they don't have it in parentheses, but I will. How's that? I mean, you got this, just seems a little more efficient to write it like that. We got 3 squared, and that's kind of neat. And that's, that's very, uh, it's easy to remember, so to speak, if you're going to go there. Uh, it's got to be, each one of these is one more than the guy over there. Well, what's one more than that? How about 2m minus 1? Okay, and then, of course, that's right here. Make sure you're multiplying by 2m. You're not going to get the right answer. You know, times 2m. Um, yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy, guys, but it's, it's the way it is. They've, you know, and this, this stuff manifests itself in different places and it, it's it's now you say well how good is this if i mean i don't know where we're going to you know how are you going to actually get an answer here that's going to make some sense well sometimes there's products manifest themselves ladies and gentlemen products manifest themselves sometimes as an infinite product and if and if somewhere hidden in all that there is um you know, somewhere hidden in all that, you guys, there, you know, that's just it. I mean, there, there's an infinite product that can occur in some places. And if that's the case, um, 
if that's the case, man, that's just the way it is. That's the case. So this, that's a huge conclusion. I mean, and sometimes you say, well, what good is this if it's an infinite product? <clears throat> Some problems are manifested, are solved. There's some problems that, that manifest an infinite product. And that infinite product very much resembles pi. If it does, you're there. You know, it's that. And they, you know, they go, they, they say a bunch of stuff here, guys. Uh, if they wanted you to find the square root, uh, there's like a, a quick way to go there. They say, okay, that's, that's the answer here. What if I wanted to find an expression for the square root of pi? Wow. I mean, well, you, you're kind of looking at it. I mean, if you're looking at something like this, there's a lot going on here. Um, first thing that jumps out at me Yeah, sounds good to me. I mean, there's the, okay, so you're looking at that right there. Then they want to say, okay, why don't you tell me something regarding the square root of uh, the square root of pi? Sometimes problems manifest themselves where you got to find pi, and pi somewhere shows up as an infinite product. If pi shows up as an infinite product, I can work with this. You know, I can work with this to get that. Hey, what's pi? Well, if pi over two is what we just said it was. I mean, I don't know, I'm sounding a little bit like a fool right now, guys, but let, let, let me sound like that fool. Uh, pi, over, pi over 2 is equal to the limit of that infinite product. If you multiply by 2 on each side, pi is going to be equal to all of this. Multiply by 2 on each side, and then, you know, here's pi over 2. Multiply by 2 on each side, pi equals all of this times 2. You know, 2 times 2 is 4. Work with that. There's a lot of ways you can go there. Well, let's take a look, guys. I mean, we're, we're looking at it. I think that's it. I mean, I think it's about it. Let me, uh, now we take a look at this. We've already said a bunch here. Let me just quickly run through this. Um, Take that right there. Get the you know I want to solve for the square root of pi. So with that in mind, if you read my notes, guys, it's going to go a lot more smoothly. You can go at your own pace, and you're going to be able to read a lot faster than I can write. Um, so you're going to be fine that way. Um, take that and get the square root. Get the square root of pi over 2. I don't know, guys. The square root of anything squared is just the anything that you had to begin with. And that'll kind of make things a lot easier to look at. Um, it's the limit as m goes to infinity. And here we go. 2 times 4. Yeah, I know it was 2 squared earlier. 4 squared earlier, 6 squared earlier, 8 squared earlier. I get it. I get it. I get it. Uh, but now it's not. For obvious reasons, it's not. Look at it. You know it's not. Um, over. Here's the... Here's the 3, the 5, the 7, the 9. Yeah, it's 1 bigger. Well, what's, big, what's 1 bigger than 2m minus 2? Well, add 1 to 2m minus 2. Uh, you've got the square root of the product 2m. Sure. And you'll see it in the notes, guys. You'll see it in the notes. Um, True. Uh, they say a lot of stuff. Let me stay with it. 
Um, they are telling you, okay, this gets kind of uh, interesting, I guess you could say. Let's, let's go with that. Let's say I, I'm going to leave it at this for now, and then I'm going to say to you, why don't you multiply? Why don't you multiply by M, forgive me, no, uh, let, me, let, me, let me think. Um, there's a number of ways to do this. Um, I'm just going to try to... Um, Okay, they, they, then they say something different. Okay, you got this right here. Uh, I want to say to you, you could, in place of this, okay, this get a little messy, guys. We got to kind of, we got to be really careful here. Um, what happens if you put a one times two right here, times three, times? Well, let me ask you a couple questions. What happens, my friends, if we say? What happens if we were to put one times two, you know, let's on the bottom here, let's just do something. Let's put one times two here, times three, times four, put a four here, put a six here. I tell you what, one times two is two. We're not going to worry about that. One times two is two. So one times two, one times two is two. Put a two here. It was not here before. Put a two here. Put a 4 between 3 and 5. Put a 6 between 5 and 7. Put an 8 between 7 and 9. So put a 2 right here. There's a 1 right here. There's a 1 already here. Okay. Put a 2 between the 1 and 3. Put a 4 between the 3 and 5. Put a 6 between the 5 and 7. Put an 8 between the 7 and 9. Put a 10 between the 9 and 11. Put a 12 between the 11 and 13. You get my picture. One's already there. Yeah, but yeah, you ended up putting things that weren't there before. Yeah, you put all these even numbers in there before. Really? Yeah, you did. Okay. If you did, if you put all these even numbers on the bottom, it's not an equation anymore. You got to put all those even numbers on top now. Whatever you put on the bottom, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let me put a 2 right here. A two right here, this is all multiplication taking place. A two between the two being multiplied, a four between the two being multiplied, a six between the two being, being multiplied, an eight between the two being multiplied. What's going on here? I'm putting two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 in a product array in the denominator that was not there to begin with. It was not there to begin with. Really. If you put all those in here, you put all those numbers in here, put them in here. Really? If you put them in here, then it, beco then it becomes 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. It becomes 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8 times 9 times 10. Wait a minute. It becomes 2m minus 1 factorial. This has got to be odd. This stays odd. Why? Because 2m minus 1. I don't care what m is. You subtract 1, it's odd. You're doing 2m minus 1 factorial. You add all those evens, you put all those evens in there in a multiplicative array. Really? Wow, you got a, there's a big denominator, guys. It wasn't there before. You've got this. I'm sorry. You've got, what you put in there is, you put in a 2, a 4, a 6, an 8, a 10, a 12, dot, dot, dot. Really? Yeah, when I, I had the odds right here, you guys got the reverse button on the film, and you've got my notes. In the notes, it's already there. At least it's pointing to that. You ended up putting these in there. Really? What is that? You know what that is? 
that right there is well it's an interesting it's an interesting scenario what it is if you divide this by two a lot has happened here guys a lot has happened here you ended up doing this you put these on the bottom and they weren't on the bottom to begin with you put these on the bottom if you put these on the bottom if you put all of these on the bottom to get all of this you got to put if you put all these on the bottom, you got to put all these on top for it to remain. Yeah, let's do that. All the evens, two, four, six, eight, in a multiplicative array that were put down here got you this. And I'll also put two, four, six, eight up here. And it becomes that. True. What else? Uh, I got an idea. Isn't this two times one? Isn't this two times two? Isn't this two times three? Isn't this two times four? This right here, you guys. Uh, for how many are there? Uh, there's uh, these are even ones now, right? Uh, yeah, I went one less. I went two m minus two. There was a 2m minus 2 right here. Yeah, I know, it's, it's one smaller than this guy. If this guy's 101, 2m minus 2 is 100. Oh, it's in there. It's part of all this. Yes, what else do you want to say? I want to say this. That right there is 2m minus 2. factorial well there's a lot of things you could say let me let me kind of think about it the, the top is this one the bottom is this the same as I don't think they went there, but I think we're justified in going there. I think they probably did go there. Is that true? Um, no, actually, actually, it's not true. What is true is this. Factor a 2 out of here. You know, there's more to it. There's more, more to it than meets the eye, I guess. Uh, I'm going to have to factor a 2 out of each one of these. And there's 2m minus, and there's 2m minus 2 of those occurring. Uh, what does that mean? 2 times 1. Uh, 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Um, let us see exactly what we can say here, guys. Uh, 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times, okay. So, it's 2 times all those. Why don't you pull a 2 out of there a bunch of times? Um, there's m minus 1 of these. Um, as we said, it was this, right? 2m starting at 2 and taking it from there. Uh, let me try to think about this, guys. Um, as we look at this, I'd ask for suggestions here, but yeah, we don't have a live audience, as we said. Um, there's got to be a connection here. Uh, the connection is that you've got 
You can do a whole bunch of things here. I think they, they made a move here that was quite good. Everything's fine regarding this. And I think what we can do is, this is true. First of all, this, this is true, guys. I'm not, I'm not trying to solve something vis-a-vis -vis what I've said in the sense of, gee, I'm debating whether or not this is true. This is true. You saw the move we made. You saw where we were. Um, we tacked on 2 times 4. We tacked on 2 times 4 times 6 times 8 times 10 times 12 times 14 times 16. We tacked all that on to the bottom. If you did that to the denominator, you've got to do it to the numerator for this equation to hold. Because remember, we square rooted, we square rooted each side of this equation, and all that kind of went, all that kind of went. Uh, you know, you know, we we have this right here, which is really convenient. We square rooted both sides, and we got the square root of the quotient pi over two is equal to two times four times six times dot 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 times the quantity two m minus two over. Three, you know, over three squared, you know, the whole thing. So all these squares leave, all these squares leave, that's square rooted, and we had what we had earlier, and then I said, okay, let's take and fill in the gaps. There's a one, there's a three, there's a five, there's a seven. What do you say you put a two between the one and the three? Put a four between the three and the five. Put a six between the five and the seven. Put an eight between the seven and the nine. Yeah, that's that. We'll do the same thing up here. Well, put a 2, put a 2, a 4, a 6, an 8. There already was a 2, a 4, a 6, an 8, and you're putting them in there again. So they're squared. That's where we got that. You had 2, 4, 6, 8, all in a multiplicative fashion put in here. That's this. Because you just filled the gap here after you square rooted this, the 3, the 5, the 7, you made it into a factorial. Because in place of with the 3, 5, 7, you have 2, 4, 6, etc. There it is. Then the 2's were placed here. We're fine. They're good with that. Um, what they do is, at that point, they say, okay, let's, let's do something a little different. Let's make, let's put a 2m up here. Let's take this. And again, it's, it's with the notes, guys. So let me kind of stay where I'm at. But let me kind of refer you to the notes more than anything. But at least, let me at least try to show something here. Uh, what do you say you bring a 2m right here? And if you do that, you got to bring a 2m right here. Um, yeah, there's a 2m here and a 2m here, right? Uh, 2m divided by 2m is 1. Put another 2m right here, though. Well, then divide by 2m right here. What's going on here? That right there, you guys... 2m times this is 2m factorial. 2m minus 1 factorial times 2m uh, How about a 1 doubled? How about a 1 doubled and then square it? How about a 2 doubled? which is 4, then square it. How about a 3 doubled and then square it? How about a 4 doubled and then square the result? Really? You can do that. What's going on here? Uh, what's going on here, there's a 2 every time. Um, there's a 2. I can pull a 2 out of here. Guy, let's just, let me, I don't know where, where you want to go with this, how you want to do this. Is everybody okay with 
a two being pulled out. Forget the exponents up here. Forget the exponents up here, the twos. Forget them for a while. Forget them for a little while. Forget the twos up here. Two times one is two. Two times two is four. Two times three is six. Two times four is eight. Two times five is 10. You get the picture. Two times m minus one is two m minus two. Two times m is two m. Aha. Uh -huh. And the two has been pulled out of all of them. m times. The two has been pulled out m times. Two to the m. Then you've got one, you got a one, a two, a three, a four. Wait a minute. A one, a two, a three, or four. Going on. You gotta have the two in the you're not just pulling out the two once, guys. The two gets pulled out here. Two to the one. Pull, two gets pulled out here. That's the second two. Two times two is out. Times another two being out. Two times two times two has been pulled out. That's two to the three. M of these, two got pulled out M times. Two to the M is pulled out times that. There it is. That's pretty important. Um, that's true. Uh, there's a little more to it, though. A little more to it, my friends. We got that guy pulled out. Just want to make sure we got it pulled out enough here, guys. We got it. Yeah, we got it pulled out twice. And it becomes this. Here's where it can get messy. Be careful. 2M. What's going on here? What are you talking about? I'm talking about, I'm talking about if you had just 2 times 4 times 6 times 8, dot, dot, dot. If you had just that times, uh, you know, times, uh, times 2M, right? And there's M of the, so M equals, M equals 1 all the way to M. If you got that, ladies and gentlemen, is that the same as two being, can you pull a two out of here and get one? A two out of here and get two. A two out of here and get three. A two out of here, pull a two out of here. Two divided by two. You know, factor a two from the two, you get one. Factor a two from here, you get two. Factor a two from here, you get three. Factor a two from here, you get four. Factor a two from the 10, you get five. One, two, three, four, five. This is two, there's M of those twos you pulled out. Times M factorial. I agree. What happens if you square it, though? See, the thing is, guy, that's true. That is true. Yeah. Sure is true. What if you take all of this and square it? Then you got to square all of this. That becomes 2 to the 2m. m factorial squared. Two to the 2m, m factorial squared. Wow. All the way through m, huh? Sure looks like it. Um, 2 to the 2m. m factorial squared. Is that true? Yeah, it's written down twice. Guys, this listing, this listing occurs twice. With one listing, with just one listing, you guys,
You could pull a two out of here, pull a two out of there, pull a two out of there, pull a two out of there, and it becomes this. Sure. How many twos did you pull out? I pulled M factors of two out. That means by two to the M will I multiply the M factorial to get this. Great. Square this. You gotta square this. That's where it's coming from. That's where it's coming from. Yeah, it's a mess. Yeah, true. That's it. That's what it is. What do you say you multiply by the square root of 2 on each side? So let me just see if we're all if, if everybody's in agreement here, if I'm agreeing with this. Yeah, we're looking good. We're looking real good. We're looking good. It's a lot of ways you can go. I think I wrote it a little differently at the end of the day on this thing. What do you say you take the square root of 2? It's the square root of the ratio pi over 2. The square root of the quotient pi divided by 2. Why don't you multiply by the square root of 2 on each side? When you multiply multiply by the square root of 2 on each side, Multiply by the square root of 2 over here. Square root of 2. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. This is square root of m. This is square root of m. This is 2m. Um, I think the way we did this right. Yeah, right. Okay, we're, we're coming to the same place. All right, you do this, at the end of the day, I, you know, there's different approaches at this point. Uh, the twos cancel. Remember, I multiplied by the square root of two on each side. I multiplied by the square root of two on each side. I got the square root of pi. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. 2 square root of m over 2m. The 2's cancel. I got square root of m over square root of m. I'm sorry, I've got square root of m over m. Square root of m over m is just square root of m at the end of all that. So what you got here is limit. Give myself a little more room, guys. We're running out of time here, running out of room. And we got here. What do we got? I'll write the way they wrote it. It's the quantity m factorial squared times the quantity 2 to the 2m over 2m over over the product over the quantity 2m factorial 
times the square root of m on the bottom. So basically, guys, let me see here, guys. Let me give myself just a little more room here. I can have it here in one place. All right. I mean, it's, it's guys, it's, it, the problem was solved a few minutes ago, basically. You just got to tinker with this a little bit. If you multiply by the square root of 2 on each side, as we said, multiply by the square root of 2 on each side, you just got square root of pi. Here, you've got, uh, you just got square root of pi. And here you go, square root of 2 on each side, multiply. And you got square root of pi equals square root of 2 times square root of the product. Square root of 2 times square root of the product, 2m. Well, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. The 2's cancel. That all cancels down to what we're about to do. All right. Um, they put the m factorial squared in front. Uh, Then the 2 to the 2m, I'm just following the way they wrote it. Um, 2 to the 2m, and 2m factorial. Run out of chalk, guys. Um, That's it, guys. Um, it's the whole process. It's the whole thing. Um, these are frequently occurring, and uh, they're done in such a way that you can kind of, it, they're man, I mean, you got to work at it, obviously. You, can, you see it took us a while. Again, the notes are going to go a lot more quickly, but uh, this is basically the way it's going to play. I mean, it's, you're looking at something like this. Where's it going to go? Yeah, it's going like this. Um, And that's where it goes, guys. I mean, there's, there's, I'm not sure how this stuff looks on the camera sometimes, guys, so I kind of do a little bit, uh, look at it again, I guess. But uh, that's essentially your look at the end of all this thing. It's a lot there. I mean, it's a lot there to get there, but once you're there, you know, it's not too bad. I mean, you're looking at, you know, the square root of pi, as we said, 
you know, limit m goes to infinity. And uh, like I said, there's different ways to write it, but you can be writing the same thing at the end of the day. And uh, they prefer to kind of, you know, this is a nice shorthand. What's, what's big about this is it's a, it's a nice shorthand. Factorial notation uh, is a great shorthand, you guys. So you, you got, you know, you've got this as a quantity here, squared like that, and you got, and again, it occurred twice. That's the big thing. That's where we could get into trouble if we're not careful. Um, and Some beautiful formulas and again I'm t I, I cannot emphasize it enough guys this stuff does find itself um, you know it does find itself talked about quite a bit so Talk about that, it's a pretty big thing. It's a horse apiece either way, guys. So I wrote that down twice over there. Hopefully, I'm always a little apprehensive about what the, the, the color, qual the, the quality of the, of the video is gonna be. They've done great work getting us in here. But, uh, the challenge always is, you know, the quality of the video sometimes, how it can happen. And that's beyond everyone's control. So I just roll it twice. So if you got, Pi over, pi over 2 is equal to this. Well, what's pi? Uh, obviously, pi is going to be double pi over 2. And this happens. You can write it like this. It means something very worthwhile. What is the square root of pi? Is there a shorthand? People are thinking, well, what are you talking about? What's the big deal? Just square, you know, multiply by 2 on each side. Multiply by 2 on each side and then square root each side. Yeah, but it's sometimes in problems that occur. Uh, certain mathematical entities appear and if you can see the connection between those mathematical entities and between Wallace's theorem, Wallace's formula, Wallace's formula for pi associated with you know pi over 2 equals something and I can easily get pi equals something if I got pi over 2 just multiply by 2 on each side and what is the square root of pi? Well here's more of a shorthand and sometimes factorial notation shows up Factorial, factorial notation shows up sometimes, and it's good to have formulas related to some quantities that are very famous, very well known, and if those quantities involve factorials, factorials themselves show up in other places, so maybe there's a cancellation that can be made. Maybe there's a use that can be made. That's why we kind of went into all this detail to get this, and that's just here. Hopefully the, the, the image quality is good either way. So basically you're looking at the square root of pi and pi over 2. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for your time. Take care.